Well, a very bright good morning to everybody watching from Nepal and all around the world. This is Dish Home Fibernet presents Ireland Wolves Tour of Nepal. We are here at the final few games. This is the second one day match between Nepal A and Ireland Wolves. The, the first match being won by Ireland Wolves. What a game that was. They just edged it by 21 runs. A low scoring game and there you have it. Team Nepal A coming in for the match. The manager collecting all the cell phones as the protocols say. The players entering and they will look to bounce back after that defeat in the first one day match. Looking at your screens right now is the Ireland Wolves. Plays, played an amazing game in the first. Wonderful with the ball, especially. And they will be pumped up. Nepal, Dev Kanal. All pumped up. And a wonderful strain with the bat. Scored 26 runs of 22 deliveries in the first game. The coach, Gyanendra Malla, the former Nepal national team captain. It's going to be an interesting game, this entertaining one. Captain Vinod Bhandari. Players. Ready out there, they're warming up. It's a wonderful day. The sun is shining bright. And everyone has reached the ground. We're expecting some good turnout today as well. There you go, Nepal A versus Ireland Wolves. This is the second one-day match of Dish Home Five Net presents Ireland Wolves Tour of Nepal. Two more games to go. Nepal A needs to bounce back. That's the simple equation. Now, before moving further, let's go for the toss with Sachin. Over to you, Sachin. Very warm morning, sunny morning out here, and we're all ready for the second one-day match between Nepal A and Ireland Wolves. Hey. Vinod Bandari, Nepal A captain. He rock. The skipper of Ireland Wolves, and we've also been joined by the matcher, Ray Amitani. So, Vinod will spin the coin. Heads, please. Heads is the call Hello. from Neil. And it is tail. It's tail. Vinod tossed it to the world. What are you doing? I'm going to go to the ball. 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 Neil, you'll have to bat first again. What would you have done? And we would bat. Also because you were bundled out for only 157 but managed to defend that target some, somehow. Yeah, I thought we were in a good position today. We were 20 out for 3 and uh, I thought we had a bit of bad performance and we had a bad amount of game and it certainly made it hard for me. I was put up to the same thing and another 3 spin is really just going to be It has been a very hectic series for you, so what are the changes you had in the team? Uh, Gavin Howey uh, bought the top of the game. So the news I have from the center is Vinod Bandari has won the toss and he will bowl first again. Well, probably a bit more of what we expected from Vinod Bandari. He knows his local conditions so well. And he's played a huge amount of cricket at this venue, isn't he? Let's get a look at the two playing 11s. Lots of changes. Particularly for Ireland, we see Ben White go out. Ross Adair still no sign of him in the starting 11. Cade Carmichael also misses out, which is a big surprise given how well he played the other day. There has been a little bit of illness around the Irish camp. So in comes Morgan Topping. It'll be good to see the Waringstown CC man for the Nepal A side. Just the one change. Out goes Arjun Kamal. And Neran Bata comes in. So we're nearly all set for the 
Good to see Gavin Hoey, the other change, actually, for the Irish Wolves. He'll come in with his leg spin and a pair of hitting. Fionn Hans had a good series, particularly with the ball, lots of wickets in the T20s. And then the two stars from the other day, Liam McCarthy and Matthew Humphreys, nine wickets between them as Ireland somehow pulled it out of the fire. Tom Mays will hope to bowl a few more overs today. And for Nepal, eh? just that one change. You see Naran Bata get his chance today. No Arjun Kamal. And certainly they will look to bat better and they will look to bat longer than they did the other day because it was really poor, the collapse in that first one there. For Nepal, if they can win today, they will square the series and set us all up for a, a sensational Sunday decider. It's been a superb tour, really, really good. Most enjoyable throughout. And the games have been very, very closely matched, partic particularly between those two A-sides. Avash, it seems as though it's been a very hard to predict series. We thought as though Nepal were going to take a 1-0 lead in the series a few days ago on Wednesday. But their batting was really disappointing. Yeah, they had a good start with the bat. Dev Kanal, Arjun Kumal putting up a good total. But since then, the team fell like anything like a house of cards. It wasn't expected. That wasn't in the script. But wonderful balling by the Ireland Wolves. They came back right in the game. Started taking wickets at regular intervals and very frequently. Not allowing the Nepali batsmen to settle in the crease. Shah Alam gave some ray of hope for Nepal. But just couldn't control his temptation to go over the top. Give away his wickets. And here come our two umpires. Here come our two umpires for the day. We see... Ram Pandey and Ujwal Regjmi, alongside the reserve umpire today, Himal Rajgiri. We already seen the match referee out at the toss. Yeah, for Ireland, certainly you would suspect the likes of, of Gareth Delaney is one to keep an eye on. I think Stephen Doheny will want to take his chance in these last two games too. Certainly three or four of the Irish team down with a little bit of illness. Not quite sure what it was. Hasn't been the food, maybe just something... A little bit of a bug around the camp. They'll be looking to get their hands on more silverware. They've already taken the T20 trophy. And now a real chance to add the 50 overs silverware to that as well. Kamal Singh Ari being the talk of the town, isn't he, after that hat-trick the other day? Many speculating can he force his way into that senior side for the ACC Premier Cup that starts in, I think it's just seven days' time. So we should look forward to not just at the end of this series, but throughout the coming weeks and months. He had a wonderful game in the previous bowl, 6.3 overs, uh, taken four wickets, given away just 21 runs in that process. By the time he finished the first innings, looked like his hat-trick was the icing on the cake for Nepal. They were able to restrict their opponent to a very low total of just 157 runs in 38.3 overs, but it was a different story for Nepal with the bat. 136 all out in just 25.3 overs. Yeah, I think both sides will be disappointed the way they batted. I don't think there was too many demons the other day with the pitch at all. That's why the batting performances surprised me so much. Ireland A bowled all out for 157 and inside... 39 overs, and then Nepal A, I tell you, if you're watching on, you would have thought it was a T20. It was a bizarre, chaotic, crazy chase. It really was. 35 for none. All of a sudden, became 56 for six. And Bashir Ahmed got a few runs. Shahab Alam was the top scorer all the way down at number nine. He played very nicely. But even his dismissal inside the 25 over mark was a real giveaway, just a chip down to long off off Matthew Humphrey's second last delivery. So it's meant that the Irish Wolves have pulled a game almost from nowhere out of the fire to win by 21 runs. Remarkable to think that between the two sides, they only batted 73 overs, excuse me, 63 overs. So there was 37 overs left out there between the two sides. Must bat better, Stephen Doheny and James McCollum. No issues with the, the wicket, the pitch for me. 
It has been some good bowling, no doubt. Shahab Alam in particular I thought was outstanding, as has this man being Kamal Singh Iri. So good to see him back fully fit after those nasty injuries he's been having to battle. Well, it's making a good comeback. Talking about Nepal's bowling, they bowled really well towards the end of the Irish innings. They took six wickets in just 4.4 overs. It was when the game turned around, it started falling in regular intervals. And suddenly at the end, Kamal Singh Ayri with a hat trick. We've seen a lot in this, this first ODI one day. Sorry. So we're all set for game number two. The penultimate match of this dish on Fire Burnett Wolves. Irish Wolves tour of Nepal yeah. and runs immediately as it's clipped around the corner to fine leg for a single. So Stephen Dohany will get off the mark. James McCollum is one of those who's feeling a bit under the weather, so can he keep his energy levels in some kind of consistency and, and find a way to score some runs? Not going to be easy out there. A little bit cooler this morning than it was yesterday. Very hot yesterday, 28, 29 degrees in the valley. We're expecting it to heat up throughout the day, but no surprise to see Binod Bandari have a bat first, or have a bowl first, and send Ireland into bat. The reason why all the assistance you'll get for the bowlers in the morning, it's going to be this first 30, 45 minutes. You want breakthroughs with the new ball. In the first game, we saw three early wickets for Nepal. But then it was that partnership that lasted for the fourth wicket. Between Carmichael and Rock, 65 runs of 65 deliveries stabilized the innings for Ireland Wolves. But as soon as Rock fell, everything started going wrong for Ireland. They lost six wickets within 12 runs. There was a couple of remarkable collapses, wasn't there? Six for 12 for Ireland at the death, mainly thanks to that Kamal Singhari hat trick. But if you look at the Nepal A fall from 35 for none all the way to 56 for six. Nicely bowled. That's six for 21. And again, I give credit to the bowlers. I'm really not trying to take away from Liam McCarthy's effort, Matthew Humphrey's effort. Kamal Singh Aris Shahab Alam was outstanding too. Nice delivery, that just nipping back in off the seam. Some of the batting, uh, I think, naive to say the least. And what Binod Bandari was saying after the game was maybe his side had taken a little while to adjust from T20 mode through to 50 over cricket. Matthew Humphreys there on the right, who bowled so, so well. Ten overs, three maidens, five for 32. Outstanding from the left arm spinner. That will really encourage Irish fans because it's his career best in list A cricket if this, this does retain its status. It's been given it at the moment. And for a young man who's 21, already played a test, two ODIs and a T20I. I think he was thrown in a bit at the deep end. I was there in Bangladesh on that tour. And it felt to me as though he was, he was just very nervous. Understandably, he was 20 years old, given his first appearances for Ireland. And then a test match cap to follow down in Gaul in, in Sri Lanka. And it all felt like it just came a little bit soon for him. Has that rich potential, though. And plenty of time for him to improve. Quick single going to be run. Direct hit. Gone. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant to Shahab Alam. And he has done everything right over the last few days. Runs, wickets, never run out. We'll talk about presence of mind. The sharpness here. Direct hit was and the need. That is what Nepal A get. Just look at that. He wanted to steal a quick single. Shahab Alam had different plans. Wonderful. No hesitation for the umpire. The fingers straight went up. They are happy now. First wicket down. It's Ireland Wolves. One for one.
Well, a dream start for the, Irish, for the Nepal A side. The Irish Wolves have lost an early wicket thanks to a brilliant piece of fielding from Shahabalam. In fact, it's the end of the over. We'll have a look at it in a moment. It's one for one. Rajan Dakal to get things going. Thought he bowled nicely, left arm seamer the other day. He picked up the wicket of McCollum. But today, he won't be able to do that as McCollum is already gone. PJ Moore, the new man at number three. Big opportunity for him today. He'll want a big one. He won't want a 30 or a 40. He'll want an 80 plus. Two more chances to make a bit of a case to Heinrich Milan. Um, Andrew White, the chair of selectors. Gary Wilson, the assistant coach. Make a big case to the men that matter. Watching on back in Ireland, and indeed Ryan Eagleson here is the head coach, national team bowling coach. I say I need to get back into the mix for the Irish white ball team. Get a look at this run out. The, the brilliance of this from Shahab Alam is he's got to run around the ball. It's going to his weaker side, to his right hand side, but he manages to get his body around it and still affect the direct hit. It's too early for Ireland Wolves to take such kind of risk, to be honest. What a sharp piece of feeling there. Bills all going in the air. Launching itself to space. They'll put the Ireland team in some kind of pressure. And you saw it so well there in that replay. He really only had a stump to aim at. This is followed up now by a misfield from... I think that's Bashir Ahmed there. I might have to have a word with Bashir. Is it's the wrong shirt he's got on him. He's had a bit of a change. He was in 75 the other day. I'm certain that's Bashir Ahmed. You tell that hair a mile away. That just happened covering in the previous over. I was looking at Bashir Ahmed. He was winning, I, I guess, number 11. A good start for Nepali. So far, so good. Taking a wicket. Well, the previous game was the previous delivery. The previous game, uh, though it was a 50 over cricket, but it looked like a T20. While still missing by 21 runs, 22 to be exact. Have to bounce back in this one. A little bit of movement there. You can just see it shaping away from the right-hander. It's more than angle. Binad Bandari again, not with the gloves. Look at the amount of protection he has on those fingers. This is another look at the run-out. One of the challenges for McCollum here, you, you often will be told by your coaches, hit it to mid-on or mid-off and set off immediately. You'll be okay. That's off the front foot. So that's if you're forward and driving. If you call yes immediately, particularly if it's a little bit to the left or the right, of the mid-on or mid-off fielder, you should have a good chance of getting there. Problem was, McCollum was off the back foot, so it's just that split-second difference that allowed the run-out opportunity. Alam had one stump to aim at, and it was the bullseye that he hit. Absolutely brilliant. Sensational start from Nepal. And I'll tell you something, there's one thing for me that this series 
deserves. It's been such a successful tour. The series deserves a series decider on Sunday. Probably should have had it in the T20s across the balance, even though it was 2-1. We didn't have a series decider. Maybe we'll have it in the 50-over stuff here. Hopefully, and a lot of my friends were telling me, when is the final? I was telling them, we don't have a final. It's a three-game fixture. But as you said, Lenny, why not? Nepal winning this one and we see the last game as a final and that's the end of the second over Ireland Wolves two for one So a cautious, quiet start for Ireland, including the loss of James McCollum, who, well, he hasn't really had the tour that he would have liked. He's had some real troubles with injury over the last couple of years. I think it's three or four dislocated shoulders. And he will have felt this is a great way to start his 2024, press his case, particularly for the 50 overside. I wouldn't see him getting into the mix in T20 cricket, but not the start he would have wanted. It's nicely flicked into the leg side. Got very good hands, PJ Moore. Outfield is quick. And two fielders in the deep come together. Mason Dakal it is that does the work. Uh, PJ Moore, of course, a dual international, played for Zimbabwe, has, has come up to Ireland. Yet to play a white ball game for Ireland. Has played a few test matches. What have you thought of him so far? He's excellent in the T20s. Hey, he's done wonderfully well. A good part of the team. And this is what we like to see in a game of cricket. Every player giving their best. This was just a fielding incident. The players almost colliding with each other. Bit of a swing there. It's good to see. That's the reason might be that Binod Bhandari chose to bowl first. Yeah, definitely. I don't think you would get that at 1.30 or, or 1.15 or whatever time it is that the second innings begins. You will get it just maybe the first 30 to 40 minutes no more than that it's a nice bit of shape and it's actually late movement too if he can get that in and around the off stump even a fourth stump line might bring that slip into play that's already shaken there at first slip similar clip into the leg side more work to do for now some tackle down at fine leg a brace of Twos in the over for PJ Moore. Great result for the, the Nepal senior side down in, in India. Three wins on the bounce. They're into the final of that competition. There is our third umpire today. That is Himal Rajgiri. And Nepal fans have lots of action to enjoy today. Action here at the TU. And then later this afternoon we'll have T20 action the final group game for the Nepal senior side. Who, who do you feel has been pressing that senior team? Who's been giving Monty Desai a headache down in India? In terms of players? Well, to be very honest, uh, from this team, it's definitely Kamal Singh Aide who's knocking on the door of the senior team. Also, Arif Sheikh done really well. Arif Sheikh also trying to bounce back into the team and this is something very interesting to see especially in Nepali cricket since the initiation of the A team the players are getting a lot of chance to make a comeback before this it was all about the domestic circuit you go around you play those domestic matches then you can make your place to the team but now the spotlight is straight on you since you're in the A team and that also gives competition to the players who have who are coming up the ranks, they are in the regional team and they have that opportunity now to go out there and perform, step in their seniors' boots in the domestic circuit and make a place in the A-team. And I think as a consequence, historically, the, the selection was a little scattergun. It was a little random, wasn't it? <laughs> That's a beautiful extension of the arms from PJ Moore. Only a fraction overpitched. He was looking for that late movement. But Moore got into a good position and drives it away gloriously. 
the shot of the morning thus far. Boundary 10 to third, 10 for one. Really beautiful shot to end the previous over from PJ Moore. Stephen Doheny will also be desperate like PJ to press the case. Of Andrew White, of, of Heinrich Milan, of Gary Wilson. 5 a.m. back in Ireland right now. I suspect there was a few early alarm clocks set in Malahide and up in Belfast. Ah! Dachal started really nicely piece of fielding from Binab Bandari, who again doesn't have the gloves. This is the last ball of the previous over. That is one proper cricketing shot. Wonderfully played, and that perfect timing coming from the sweet spot of the bat. No chance for the fielder. And they've recovered well after that. Unscripted wicket for Ireland Wolves. To a piece of fielding by Bashir Ahmed. Big your pardon, Shah Balam. On drive this time. Now that's a good single. That's a well judged single. He's on the front foot. It's gone to the left of the fielder, his stronger side. Yes, but it's an immediate yes. And as a consequence, gets home for that single. You can just see there, that's a really good angle of one of the technical challenges that Stephen Dohany has identified. Something he needs to correct. The bat is not coming down perfectly straight, is it? And as a consequence, He'll often get caught out at slip and at gully with the back coming down at an angle, particularly a left arm seamer he has problems against and someone bringing the ball away from him. So ironically, the two problems that Stephen Doheny has technically has been challenged with here this morning, a right arm away swing bowler and a left arm bowler. Great to see the fans in early. They're trying to create an angle for the Nepali team, Rishan Dagal. Along with Kamal Singh Aide. I'm talking about the power play. Then it was 36 runs with two wickets for Nepal in the first match. That was a decent start for Nepal. So they've already taken a wicket now, but it seems like Ireland have recovered a bit well so far. Oh, look at that. That swung a long way. So that's the attempted away swinger. Started out well outside. The pads of PJ Moore have almost gone like a banana quite late. Really good skills here from Rijan Dakal. Both of these bowlers getting good movement. Can they make it pay? They'd love two, if not three, in the power play. It's really important to get those wickets. As they always say, wickets are keys. It's a common commentary phrase, phrase to be honest. The previous game was something different. It's more about patience, especially in the second innings while losing wickets in regular intervals. And interesting thing, Nepal lost eight wickets. Eight wickets all caught out. Well, yeah, and, that, and what that clearly identifies, there, there was the run out to go alongside the nine wickets that the Liam McCarthy and Matthew Humphreys shared. Clearly identifies that there is far too aggressive an intent for the format. It's a 50 over contest. You needed three runs and over. In fact, because of the rate at which they were scoring, the required run rate was often under two per over. Just needed to bat some time. Really good probing over. It's going to miss the leg stump that one. Impressive stuff from Rajan Dakal. Four have been bowled, 11 for one.
All the ones on the board. 11 for one for the Irish Wolves. And well, this is a really interesting change in bowling. Not one that I would have gone with myself, but it's always easy to call it from up here. I felt that Kamal Singari was getting some movement. Okay, yes, he did concede a boundary from the last ball of his second over, but surely you keep him going. This is why you've bowled first for a little bit of early assistance. Shahabalam may well take a wicket here. I don't think that's the point. Wouldn't mind him coming in in the eighth, ninth, or tenth over, bowl one in the one or two in the power play. This for me is a little bit too early from Inad Bandari. This also means you're going to burn up some of your key overs, some of your kind of banker overs from your most consistent left arm spinner quite early. Strange move for me. Well, this is the opposite in what happened in the first game. Uh, it was spin had to be brought. Oh, that's given. Benefit of doubt in the baller's favor this time. Well, as I said, it may well work, but it still doesn't make 100% sense to me. The question was, did it straighten enough to go on to crash into leg stump? The umpire took a long, long time to think about it. I like that. And yeah, I think probably a pretty fair decision. Dohany just getting trapped in the crease here. Look, his front foot goes nowhere. And it skids on. I don't think it's going to go over the top. The change has worked. What do I know? Binod Bandari gets it right. And he'll think it's the perfect move. Dohany's troubled start to the 50 overs. Leg of the tour continues. He's gone for just two. It's 11 for two. Morgan Topping, new man to the crease. Didn't play that first game. Just had a little bit of a hamstring niggle. And that illness that's gone around the Irish camp is, well, starting to tell, isn't it? A few of the Irish boys looking a little low energy. An interesting piece of captaincy here from Binod Bandari. Look at how he shake. It's... It's not quite a silly mid-off because it's too square for that, but it's a very close extra cover. Slip in place two, that's the captain. Pressure on Morgan Topping, new to the crease. And right now, Nepale right on top and making the decision to bowl first look very good. Yeah, we were talking about spinners being brought into the attack early today in the previous game. That was what was needed early, but Shabalam came quite late to steal another single good running and that ends the over number five Ireland Wolves 12 for two Well, a bit of a disastrous start, really, for the Irish Wolves, for the touring team. Spoken a little bit about that illness around the camp. Kind of hard to put the finger on what it is. It seems to have been a little bit of a, maybe a 24-hour bug of some kind. I think a few of the boys yesterday didn't even leave the hotel. The ones that are healthy, they did leave the hotel, though. They had a great morning and afternoon. You might have seen, if you're following Fionn Han's Instagram, who seems to be showing off lots of Nepal. Oh. They got up to one of the main temples. And what was a really hot day yesterday. 
And Dakar's going to continue. Really impressed by the skill set he's showing. In swing, away swing. And plenty of consistency with his pitch map too. Well, of all the players uh, going around Kathmandu, I think the first option is always the Monkey Temple. Especially when you are uh, in the hotel around that region. It's a wonderful view of Kathmandu. You can see. Kion Han having a the soul of a vlogger. Ah, just looking at his socials at the moment. And that's the one that comes back in, but PJ Moore reads it nicely. Shahab Alam has work to do. Can he cut this off? No. And ends up carrying it into the dish on board as well. No damage done. Only problem for Rijan Dakal, it's not really late movement, is it? You can see swinging very early from out of the hands. So PJ Moore can read it nicely. He's got lovely hands, doesn't he? Good shot for four. Beautiful movement of the wrist. Shabalam trying his best. And the best part, we're talking about the monkey temple. We're talking about the monkey temple. The stairs are quite an interesting thing to see. And especially the monkeys. Again, just a little bit too much onto the pads, clipped around the corner. That's Kalam Ali down there. One of the coaches of the Nepal A side. Good batting from PJ Moore. Fine start for him. His third boundary. Well, the story for the Nepal with the ball is still the same. The pitchers are finding quite difficult to get those wickets. Both of the wickets hasn't come off the pacers. One was a run out and one it was Sahabalam. And Iron Wolves, they found it a bit difficult to grab the wickets. Spinners doing the magic. Yeah, certainly you think of Kathmandu, the, the number of places you can visit. It's also you've got the UNESCO World Heritage Site, the, the Buddha Stupa. Somewhere it's a real cultural experience to go and if you get there around sunset, particularly when all the, the people go for their prayers. You think of the Monkey Temple, like you said. There's just so many good spots, isn't there? Good cultural spots to go and enjoy. Here you go. A regular attendee of a cricket. Grandfather of Paras Karka is always here to support Team Nepal. Good feeling. Dave Kanal. This is an interesting over. Previous one was bowled by Shah Balam, a spinner. Now, still, captain trusting on Rijan Dakal to bowl that over. Since it's a 50 over game, he wants to get those numbers running. And as you said in the previous, Captain doesn't want Saab Alam to finish off his over early, though he's getting wickets. He got one in the previous. For Nepal, I think the benefit. Side this time and gone. What an over this. Lenny. Two boundaries and a wicket in the final delivery. Soft dismissal. Rizan Dakal, wonderful piece of bowling. Well, he's got this one to swing late. It's just come back into the pads, which is a strong zone of PJ Moore. But he's pushed at the ball, and it ends up being such a soft dismissal. Like you said, Mausam Dakal takes the catch. Isn't he pumped up? So too is Rijan Dakal. He's really deserved that wicket, the left arm seamer. I think he's bowled very impressively this morning. It's a procession of Irish batters back to the hutch. More of the top scorers gone for 17. The Wolves are in all sorts. It's 21 for three.
Shabalam to continue into his second over. I think this one's going to miss leg. He's getting himself in trouble though, Morgan Topping. Look at the where the bat's coming down here. It's coming down at an angle, playing across the ball. Going to have to be careful. Good decision that for me. Should miss the leg stump. The Nepali team were convinced. It was drifting down the leg stump. big challenge for Ireland on this tour was always going to be spin. It, it dealt with it in, in mixed fashions. Sometimes they've been okay, but someone like Shahab Alam in particular has been someone that they haven't dealt with. And the reason why I, I don't think Ireland have dealt with them well is his accuracy is, is just sensational. He doesn't miss. He's like a bowling machine over and over again within a probably lay a handkerchief down no more than that. maybe an a4 piece of paper and he's nailing that spot over and over again any young boy or girl watching this you're aspiring to be a finger spinner a left arm off spinner or a right arm off spinner look at the consistency the accuracy of shahab alam edged and gone oh dear well this could be all over halfway through the morning if Ireland. Keep batting the way they're batting. That's not a good shot. Fishing away from his body. The simplest of catches to Binad Bandari at first slip. And the Irish Wolves, well, they're all over the place this morning. Shahab Alam as his second. They could well be bowled all out again. Shahab Alam already in the wicket figures. That he bowled in the nine overs in the previous game. And what a catch by the skipper. Let's look at that now. The smile says it's all. Another wicket gone. Shahab Alam strike again. And this time it's stopping's gone for two off nine deliveries. Ireland A 21 for three. Well, Gareth Delaney is in at six, and he was the first one that went down ill in the camp. Hopefully he's better now, but you look at this team, and all of a sudden, you think about the length of that tail the other day. You remember, it was six for 12 that they were routed for at the end, and they had a, a batting tail that featured well, it was rather remarkable team selection. I thought that that might have been somewhat enforced upon them. But it was Tom Mays at eight, McCarthy at nine, who can bat a bit, but Humphreys and White are really both very much number 11s. And all of a sudden, Ireland are staring down the barrel of being bowled out. I think if Morgan Topping watches this dismissal back, he'll be disappointed with himself. I wanted to play not the right of the decisions but all works for Nepal Shabalam calling his over made in over and a wicket this time it's the end of the seventh Ireland a 21 for four Let her play some. One part. Let her play. 
Well, it's the Dishon Fibernet Ireland Wolves Tour of Nepal. That's the Irish batting card. That the other day, you could make a case. Numbers 8, 9, 10, and 11 didn't offer too much with the bat today. It's a bit different because Gavin Hoey comes in for Ben White. Gavin Hoey, very capable. He's really more of a, a middle-order player than a lower-order player. So if you hand, I'd imagine he'll be at 7. Gavin Hoey at 8. And then Liam McCarthy maybe at 9. An interesting move this. Just moments after taking the third wicket to fall. Rajan Dakal is whipped out of the attack and in comes Kamal Singh Ari. Change of ends for him. As Neil Rock, the Irish skipper, faces his first ball. He must be wondering what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Good bowling display by Nepal in this match in particular. They just take, took two wickets in the power play of the first game, but they're already taken four by now and Neil Rock scored 39 runs of 32 deliveries and that partnership for the fourth wicket along with Carmichael lasted of 65 runs of 65 deliveries they are going to miss Carmichael in this game yeah I think what impressed me most about Kay Carmichael the other day was he, he played the most appropriate innings probably of the whole day across either side it's a 50 overs contest You've 300 overs to bat, 300 balls to bat, 50 overs, 300 deliveries to face, to absorb pressure, to bat time. I asked Neil Rock the same question. Did his team get caught in between the two modes of white ball cricket a bit? That's a very nice hook shot. Somewhere where Neil Rock has had problems historically, getting better and better against the short ball in recent times. He gets off the mark with a boundary. Well, the moment the ball left the bat, it didn't look like it would go for a boundary. Now we can see it's a quick outfield. Fielder getting no chance. The ball winning the race. And it is all thanks to the partnership of Rock and Carmichael in the previous game. That we're talking about 65 runs of 65 deliveries. And as you said, Carmichael's inning was the architectural innings because he scored 51 runs of 77 deliveries with just four boundaries. And exactly the thing about 300 deliveries game. I mean, I make this point quite, quite a lot when I commentate. There's an ever-growing gulf between T20 cricket and, and 50 over cricket. This isn't an official ODI, but the, the two white ball formats, they probably started out reasonably similar. Best part of two decades ago now, we saw the first T20I back in 2005, the first professional T20s were in England in 2003 so it's still very very early days for the shortest format and what's happened as a consequence with that being where the big money is with the franchise leagues all around the world it'll be a wide down the leg side half an appeal from Kamal Singh Iri but certainly you think of the difference between the ODI game and T20 cricket, it's massive now. The reason why, you've got a 50 over player who may not be able to succeed at all in, in T20 cricket and vice versa. Someone like uh, a Mohamed Wazim of UAE is a great example. Sensational in T20I cricket. I think he's ranked in the top 10 in the world in, in the T20I game. Moves over to ODI cricket, can barely buy a run. Well, yes, that's what we've been talking about and this particular ODI games, these three games, the approaches has been something like uh, T20. Ah, that's an appeal. Might have missed uh, the leg. A good decision by the umpire. And looking at the schedule, Lenny, the players played a few T20 games before this. And now they're playing a 50. Now it's all about how you train your mind to play both the formats. Yeah, and that's what Neil Rock said. I, I said, is there any excuse? And he said, there shouldn't be any excuse. We do this all the time. The vast majority of, of our senior tours now, if they're lucky enough to get a test match, brilliant. But it will usually be both white ball formats. Three ODIs, three T20Is. So you have to have that adaptability as a modern cricketer to be able to, to change your mindset, change your skill set. Maybe the difference on this tour, because of the quick turnaround, because of that one rain washout, was we didn't have the two days in between the series, we just had the one. So that 
meant, I think, Nepal A train, but I think the Irish Wolves were fairly tired. They didn't get a training session in. But both sides need to adapt better, and Ireland are in big trouble. Eight have been bowled, 27 for four. Three bowlers used thus far. All three have been excellent. Kamal Singh Ari, the only one without a wicket, but plenty of pace and movement on offer from him. You look at the team they've selected today. Only change is a batter for a batter, which is Arjun Kamal going out and Naran Bata coming in. Did see one over of, of Bim Sharkey the other day. Is there a, a concern over the, the bowling form of Bashir Ahmed? He hasn't really got it right in, in his four appearances in this series so far. Well, there's a bit of a concern. But I think that's what this whole series is all, all about, getting players more... Ah, that's it hard. I'll clear the boundary. Yes, that is an, a maximum and maybe the first of the day. Yeah, first maximum hit by the Irish Wolves captain. And he'll back himself. The, the ball is turning into him. He's a very good player of spin. Saw him hit three slog sweeps for sixes the other day. And it's the same again. That's one of his favorite strokes. And the reason why it's a safe shot the man out in the deep was a deep backward square. Now that fielding position has changed. He's come to mid-wicket. The man who was at 45 around the corner is now a backward square leg in the circle. And that's a lovely flowing drive to follow it up. But a good stop at mid-off will keep it to just a single. He's a fine player, Neil Rock. We haven't really seen it at the top level yet. And you could make a case you'll feel a bit sorry for him because he's had limited opportunities when he's gone up. He's still just 23 years of age, but remarkably across 23 senior internationals, he's yet to get a score of more than 36. And he's averaging less than 10 in, in both ODIs and T20Is. He's a much better player than that. And you think back to, to many of the, the best Irish batters, Andy Balberni, for example, let's say his first 20 or 30 appearances for Ireland, he was averaging 14 or 15. So it can take time for Irish batters to adjust up at the top level. Lorcan Tucker was probably the same. And with him being a left-hander as well, something that Ireland currently don't have a lot of. It's really just Andy McBride in the senior side who's, who's in for his off-spin bowling as a left-hander. You think back to Irish cricket historically, Ed Joyce, Niall O'Brien, John Mooney. The side was stacked full of left-handers. So if Neil Rock can get himself into form, he might get an extended run in the senior team. Well, he had a decent uh, strain in the previous game, as we already mentioned, 39 of 32 deliveries, and that uh, important partnership. Ah, oh, he's straight into the hands of Bhim Sarki, and he won't be making any mistakes with such catches. That is easiest as it can get for Nepal. Big wicket, this. Well, it's hard to describe what we've just seen. We saw. Well, some shocking strokes from Nepal A the other day. I think you can add this one from Gareth Delaney to the list. I understand it's a strength of his against left arm spin. We're inside the power play. They're four down. And Gareth Delaney has just given it away for a six ball duck. The Irish Wolves slide further. You won't believe it. They're 34 for five.
Pyon Han to the crease at number seven. He'll be at the non-striker's end. He generally had a pretty good tour. Real chance for him today to show what he can do with the bat. And Neil Rock has flicked this into the leg side for a single. Going to get another look at this wicket here. Well, I don't want to be too harsh, but uh, this is a really, really poor shot uh, given the, the match situation. Great credit to Shah Balam. He doesn't miss often. Bat just twisted in the hand. And it was a simple catch for one of the best fielders anywhere in Nepal. Let's have a look at that wicket again. It's from coming from the toe end of the bat. Not quite able to middle that. And Bhim Sharki, well, he's on. He needs no introduction when it comes to fielding. He always takes those. That is wicket number five. Pal. Still in the last over of the first power play. And 35 for five. Ireland Wolves are in trouble at the moment. They'll ah, wonderfully bold. Now he's getting that line length that he wanted. Kamal Singh Aire, he is putting the pressure from the other end. And also, uh, Pinod Bhandari's gamble of bringing Shah Balam early has paid off. Hasn't it just? Couldn't have been proved more wrong there. <laughs> nice bowling from Kamal Singh Aire. I like what he's done though as well in terms of, again, I thought he could have given Rajan Dakal one more, but he's working his, his two frontline seamers alongside his primary left arm spinner. And right now, the Irish dugout must be wondering what is going on? You have to question some of the shot selection. Pete Johnson, the team manager there. Scott Irvine, the team analyst, does a, a phenomenal job. Stuart Thompson, the SNC coach. There's Ryan Eagleson, the head coach of this tour. I would say right now, he is tearing his hair out. You will not be able to understand some of those shot choices. Ross Adair, not in the team. To date, might see him in the third and final 50 over clash. You wouldn't mind if you were playing a defensive shot and being beaten by Shahavalan that one that pitched on leg stump and at the top of off. That's okay, that's going to happen occasionally. He's a fine bowler. Think of the dismissals, Delaney's in particular, Dahani trapped in the crease, McCollum taking a risky single. And PJ Moore very softly chipping into the leg side. That will be a boundary for Fionhan to get off the mark. Hits it nicely off his legs, coming down the track aggressively. Well, that was a wonderful shot. It didn't seem like it would go on for a boundary, but it made it look so easy. Fionn Hand had a great strength with the ball. It's not lucky that he couldn't get those wickets. Had a bit of a chat after the game with Fionn Hand. Very jolly personality he carries. Yeah, you're spot on. Hugely charismatic guy. Very popular in Irish cricket circles. Has played a decent amount of cricket over in the UK as well, in England. He was at the Queen's College in Taunton. Has played quite a bit for the, the MCC, the Marlebone Cricket Club. He's a member there. And yeah, he's the kind of guy you can really get behind. I think by his own admission, he's not quite the finished product in terms of bat ball or, or in the field yet. But he'll always give you 100% effort and... I know for a fact he'll relish this scenario. He'll fancy trying to bat as many of the remaining 40 overs plus and get a big score. He's a bit of a shade of Andrew Flintoff, Freddie Flintoff to Fionan. Oh, he's just got that charisma. But he's a lot of work to do as we get to the end of that first power play. It's been all about Nepal A and their outstanding bowlers. They fielded well too. Ten of being bowled, 39 for five. So the power play has belonged completely to Nepal. Some fine bowling, particularly from Shahab Alam, who's got three for 
Three wickets to the left arm spinner. In the power play. And a wicket to Rijan Dakal to go alongside. The run out and it's standing run out, which too is from Shahab Alam. It's really been all about this man here. Top scorer the other day, wickets in the first game, wickets in the second, run outs too. What a performance from him. Now Neil Rock and Fionn Hand have a real job to do. There is relief for the Irish in a funny way with a few fielders dropping outside the circle. And Interesting that Binad Bandari chooses to go with all four outside the circle, as I wish a very good morning and a warm welcome to Sachin Timulcina. Very good morning, Sachin. Good morning, Lenny. 40 for 5, not the type of start for Ireland A at all. They wanted to bat first. Obviously, Nepal won the toss and they decided to bowl first, but it was a win-win situation for both the captains. And one thing for certain is that Binod Bandari must be the happier man. Is surely the happier man with him restricting Ireland to 40 for 5 already. Shahab Alam has been terrific with the ball. Bowled really well in the previous match. The first one day as well was the highest scorer with 37 runs. It was a low scoring contest. Brilliantly bowled was there an edge. The reaction of the keepers shows that they have certainly missed that catch. It would have been sixth. I, I think this is an edge. And I think it's also an outstanding piece of bowling. Look at how much slower he goes through the air. And Fionn Han couldn't resist a little fish. Definite edge. Comes into the gloves of Arjun. Back live with you now. This one beats the outside edge. It's all happening out there. Arjun South, a very capable keeper with the gloves. Let's have a look at this again. Was an edge there, certainly an edge there. Went for the second try as well. Wonderfully bold. This man is spitting fire at the moment. Yeah, right now this pitch early in the morning is offering assistance to spin, no doubt about it. Fionn Hand has got himself in a tangle here. But somehow he survived. Just a single from the over. 11 ball, 40 for 5. Mousam Dakal into the attack. So it's going to be a trial by spin, as it has been so often on this tour. But there may be some run scoring opportunities too. Went for 50 off his 10 overs the other day. Bowled a few really nice deliveries in there as well. He's got a, an extraordinary action. Very unorthodox, but very exciting too for me. Great to see wrist spinners being given their chance. Would love to have seen him in the T20s. See plenty of googlies, I think particularly to the the left-handed Neil Rock and again he'll just be looking to start nicely start consistently Liam McCarthy may be in next I suspect it could be Gavin Howey though at number eight no sign of the pads on yet for Tom Mays harsh wolves are in all sorts of problems does start with a googly but it's a drag down plenty of protection out there he's got a deep backward square and a deep mid wicket that does the fielding also long on out so no one for the left-hander in front of square in the circle on the leg side. And for the right-handed Fionn Han, maybe who he'll prefer bowling to. I think it should be a more attacking field. Completely agree. And Mosam Dakal, this has been an issue for him. Starts a bit nervously. Tracks down a few. I'd love to see him bowl much fuller. Like his partner Shah Balam. 
dear, dear. Lucky he got in his skip and Fionn Han did not use his long handle. It was a nothing delivery, this. I bowled plenty of them, Sachin, in my career. I can assure you, those that pitch closer to your feet than the batter's feet. A real old-fashioned long hop. Look at that. That has pitched. Well, you talk about pitch maps. That might have pitched off the Hawkeye pitch map. So what you have to do as a wrist spinner, particularly your first two to three overs, your first 12 to 18 deliveries in an ODI, you just have to find a way to get some rhythm. Don't need to bowl the wonder balls early. And he started with two googlies. I'd prefer just to see him starting with some leg breaks. Again, it's another googly. Get a few out of the front of the hand, get your stock delivery going, and then mix it up, then try a variety. Otherwise, it's hard to find your rhythm. It has been a very, very lucky escape this for Mosam Dakal because three of the four balls should have been hammered outside the ground. And Binod Bandari rightly having some words with young Dakal. You don't need to worry, young man. We've already got the five wickets. Just pitched the ball a touch fuller. In fact, a lot fuller. Yeah, that's better. That was a leg break. Better pitch. I know it's given as a wide, but that's okay. Two best leg spinning coaches I, I ever worked with. I was lucky enough to work with Terry Jenner, who was Shane Warren's coach, and Bobby Rayo, who played international cricket for both India and Ireland, ended up moving across to Ireland, being based up in the northwest. They were both big on getting into your spell. It wasn't T20 cricket back then. It was all about 50 over cricket. That was the format we played. He used to speak to me at length about bowling. Your first 12 deliveries, you don't need to bowl a single variation. Just try and get some rhythm. So much about muscle memory is wrist spin bowling. And that's another leg break. Okay, the line was wrong, but there's a better flow to it. Somehow, he's only conceded four from the first over. It wasn't the best one, but he's into his spell. 12 have been bowled. 44 for five. Neil Rock and Fionn Han trying to rebuild for Ireland after a quite disastrous power play. You talk about losing three wickets in the power play and 50 over T20 cricket, you'll lose over 90% of your games. You lose five, the odds are stacked against you. But there's plenty of time for Ireland to get back into this contest. The problem is, they've got six more overs of Shahab Alam who is very much in player of the series form right now. Runs, wickets, run outs. He's doing it all. He absolutely is and has improved his skills as a batter as well. Scored 37 runs. Came down the track and punished the spinner out of the park. He was not known for his big hitting abilities. Shah, but because of the modern day cricket, you cannot rely on one single skill of yours. Plenty of all-rounders in Nepal and Shah Balam. Maybe he's the next. Very well bowled. He's bowling it really slow. Something what Kushal Malla does. He loves giving the ball a lot of air. And that allows the ball to turn. A beautiful delivery again. He's getting the assistance from the pitch. It's a difficult stay for the Ireland Wolves batters, particularly if you're on hand. He's such a lovely repeatable action, doesn't he? I mean, right now, it feels like a matter of time for Shahab Alam against Fionn Hand. And I just wonder, Kate Carmichael got through a really difficult patch, didn't he, against Shahab Alam the other day, before Alam finally got him, but he was past 50. 
Cunhan would be delighted with that result from here. In all sorts of trouble. Three consecutive dots. Oh, look at that. Beautiful bowling. Quicker through the air and as a consequence, sharper turn off the pitch. Fionan's now faced nine consecutive dots from Shahab Alam. Five in the last over, four in this. He's making the ball to do all the talking, Shahab Alam. And Fionn Hand is not looking to attack Shahab Alam. And the second slip has been put in. I think that this is a good idea. Touch to pull this time. Only one run off the fifth over of Shahab Alam. 13 gone, 45 for 5. Edged away and oh, just short to Bim Sharkey. Googly again from Mousam Dakal. I'd love to see him explore an around the wicket angle to the left handed rock. He's going to bowl lots of googlies here. The angle of the delivery over the wicket will take it away from the left hander, and then you're trying to turn it away. If you bowl round the wicket, you're angling it in and turning it away. Fortune again for rock over pitched, yes. Not where he intended. Sharkey chases in vain. Going to be a boundary. Rock continues to play aggressively. It was very fortuitous this time. Neil Rock was pitched full. Went at it, Neil. And moves on to 20 of 16. He's played really aggressively. At this context, because they've already lost five wickets. It was a long chase for... Team Sarki is one of the best fielders Nepal has. Flicked only for a single. You look at Rocky, he's really comfortable against spin, isn't he? He plays very nicely. Ireland in, in deep trouble here of being bowled out. You, you look at their collapse at the, the, the death of their innings it wasn't the death of the 50 overs but it was the end of their innings bowled out inside 39 overs six wickets 12 runs a hat trick for Campbell Singh Iree ah! this is going to be out I think full straight skidding on easy decision for me Fionan might not be too pleased with it that's the brilliant of wrist brilliance of wrist spin you get a bit of natural variation it's a leg break that's just skidded on probably hit him in line with Maybe off stump, and for me, going to go on and hit beautifully bold. Yeah, it was out for sure. The ball would have hit the stumps. Mosam Dakal knew it. In fact, few in hand also knew it. And the umpire took some time and raised his finger slowly but certainly. That's the sixth wicket. Another one bites the dust. Five of 19 for few in hand, 50 for six.
series too. That's part of what you'll get. And then Ireland have been so good against Basharam, but maybe he's the left arm spinner that they can score against. Have to find a way to recognise there's still 35 overs to bat from here. Eight runs from the over. Good batting from Neil Rock. It's 62 for six. So 15 overs bowled, I think we'll get one more before the first drinks break. And well, this first session has belonged entirely to Nepal, eh? hasn't it? Been outstanding, in fact. And great credit to the way in which they bounced back several times throughout this series. And hit down towards long arm, will just be a single. I think that was the googly again, Mouse and Dakel. I'd love to see him trust his leg spinner a little bit more. Very much a work in progress is Dakal, but love his unorthodox nature, love his potential. He gets really good revs on the ball too. A few on social media, so I'm comparing uh, the action to Paul Adams, the left arm wrist spinner. South Africa, days gone by. That is the leg break, well bowled. They stick with the leg break. Mason, stick with four more of those. Challenge Gavin Hoey's outside edge. That's why the slip's in place. Almost make him wonder when the googly's coming before you give it to him. Beautifully bold. Well, that's perfect. That's where you want to be. It's at a good pace, a good trajectory. And Hoey does well to keep it out. Can Ireland find a way back into this contest? They've got two fine batters at the crease. But after this, it's really just Liam McCarthy left. This is good now. Very good from Mousam Dakal. Challenge for Hoey. It's again quite new to this level. He was on an Irish emerging team tour of the West Indies around in Antigua for a series of games. Some four-day cricket and some white ball cricket. challenges how long can he bat for that's nicely played he's got a good technique great hand-eye coordination good ball striker too but that was four consecutive leg breaks from Mousam Dakel bowled really really well Goes to the googly and Rock gets just enough of it. Continues his aggressive approach, the Irish skipper. He's hitting with the spin over the head of mid-off who's up in the circle. And Dakal has a real problem bowling to Neil Rock, the left-hander. He's been the only one to stand up so far in this innings. He's flown to 33 off just 25. It's the end of that first session. It's time for the first drinks break. We'll take a break here too in the commentary box. 16 have been bowled. Irish Wolves still in big trouble. 68 for 6.
Well, there's the tale of woe for the Irish Wolves this morning. Still plenty of time for them to turn it around, but they'll, I believe, have to rely heavily upon this seventh wicket partnership. Gavin Hoey and Neil Rock. Well, that is the challenge here. Finger spinner getting it to turn sharply. So Gavin Hoey is deciding with the ball turning so sharply, doesn't want to get tied down he doesn't want to just fend one away to first slip or to short extra cover so the reason he's taking on that slog sweep even though it's against the spin everyone barring deep backward square up in the circle game of cat and mouse is going to develop here you'd suspect i think what the irish will should be looking at is well hold on we've got three and a half overs of shahab alam to survive and then with due respect to Bashir Ahmed on current form, the way in which he's bowled in this series, it's a completely different style of left arm spin that they'll face. Gavin Hoy batting at five, Neil Rock 33 of 25. And Neil Rock has played really well. He's not succumbed to the pressure put in by the Nepali bowlers. Two slips now. Sweeps it against the turn, but the connection is so good that the ball has gone out of the ground. A huge hit, this. Yeah, well, he's a remarkable ball striker, Gavin Howey. There's a big risk associated with the shot because it's against the spin. So they're living by the sword, occasionally dying by it. The thing he's done well there is get on top of the bounce, get it up and over, mid-wicket fielder. And now plays with a straight bat. So he's only got three overs left, Shahab Alam. Can Ireland survive them? 17 balls, 74 for six. Yeah, really interesting move here from Binod Bandari. I think purely because of Mausam Dakal's struggles against Neil Rock, he's going to turn to a more orthodox spinner. The right arm off breaks of Dev Canal, albeit the part time off breaks of Dev Canal. This is purely about Neil Rock, not about anyone else. Dakal's going to have to find a way to bowl to left handers. Many leggies struggle with that. Did pick up a wicket in his three overs. But Bina Bandari wants a bit of control. And it will be a different challenge for Rock and Hoey now. Tall spinner does get some bounce. Consistency has been an issue for the Nepali spinners. And this was that strike right out of the middle of the bat. The sound was so sweet. A single taken. Deep Kunal. Pulled a few overs in the first match as well. 75 for 6. Lenny, do you think Bandari should go for the kill now? Or maybe look to break this partnership? This is the last re recognized partnership. Well, the thing I like, if you compare his approach with the bowlers in the 250 over contest so far to the T20s, I, I like the way he's rotated them a bit more frequently. I thought he got stuck in the mud a touch in the T20s and we ended up with the, the crazy scenario of a left arm spinner bowling the 20th and final over in the first two games. And one went for 23, the other went for 25. And I think the margin of victory was a similar amount in one of those two games. So it was very costly. I don't mind this move because of 
of Neil Rock's strength against the leg spinner. But what I'd like to see him do, that's very flat. I'd like to see him toss the ball up a bit, allow the ball to turn. Neil Rock will get back for the second. Doesn't need to bowl flat through the air. I've seen the spin that um, Shahab Alam is getting. Just bowl conventional off breaks. Give them a bit of flight, let the ball spin, challenge the outside edge of the left-hander. Much better, but the length could have been a bit shorter. It was too full, driven down the ground. And Neil Rock now moves on to 37. This has been a wonderful tour for him. Formed really well in the T20s against Nepal A. Got to a start in the first match as well. He was really very unlucky. Was dismissed to Kamal Singh Aji's Yorker, which we believed had pitched outside the line of leg stump. Plenty of bounds in that delivery. Dot delivery to end this over. 18 gone, still 9 for 6. Well, really interesting change this. It's going to be the end of Shahab Alam for the moment, much like it was the other day. He bowled seven overs in his first spell. On Wednesday, he picked up two wickets. Today, he's already picked up three, and Mesem Dakal will return. And again, of the challenge of Neil Rock to bowl to. Exact same field, three out on the leg side, all in the deep. Means no one's in the circle on the leg side. Singles everywhere for Rock if he wants them. And... We're going to see a no ball given here. And I think it's because there are five fielders outside the circle. There, there, there are. I'm not sure why Neil Rock didn't have a swing at that. I think he knew it was going to be a no ball. So in essence, it would have been a free hit. They have to bring one up. Cannot have five fielders outside the circle at this stage. It wasn't a good delivery either. I don't know why Neil Rock hasn't tried hitting this for six. Would have been a free hit. He probably was distracted by the call, but... He should have swung at it, so this will be a free hit. That's really poor from Nepal. You have to know you can only have four outside the circle at that stage. So this is a free hit to follow. Neil Rock can do what he wants with it. Big swing and a miss. Good delivery as well. He took the ball further away from the left-handed Neil Rock. Was a googly. Mosum Dagal has taken one wicket, but he's looked really inconsistent with his delivery, especially with the length of the ball, uh, balls that he has bowled. Now, slowly a partnership building here for the Ireland Wolves. They were 50 for six, mind you. Again, goes inside out over extra and gets a big piece of it. It's a googly again. It's getting a bit too predictable. Rock plays spin so well. He hits with the spin. Extends his arms nicely. It's another maximum. What a counter-attack from the Irish Wolves skipper. Brilliantly played. He was not happy with him missing the free hit. And this has gone a long way. He's not a very big man. Neil Rock. But he's incredible power. Tell you what there's a shade of in that stroke, and a real shade of. Owen Morgan, the England captain who went on to win a World Cup in 2019. He played that shot brilliantly. We always spoke about how good his wrists were. He started at Rush County Cricket Club in North Dublin, a proud Fingolian. Played for Ireland, but then went on to chase test cricket for England, which he played. But it was the white ball game that he revolutionized for England, our rivals across the water. And Neil Rock... Proud product of the Rush Cricket Club 2 in North County, Dublin. 
definite shades of Owen Morgan in that shot. He started really well, and he's found a good ally in Gavin Howey here too. 37 now, the partnership. Can they take this further? Very well, feel it there, Reason Nakal. Got his hand perfectly and stopped. It was a powerful shot that from Gavin Hoy. He hits the ball so crisply, doesn't he? Really quality ball striker. Got fast hands. Misses out this time. Dakal does the fielding again. 19 bold. Eight from that over. It's 87 for six. Thirty-seven run partnership that's come in good time. It's been rather helter skelter, isn't it? This entire fifty over series. It's felt like an extension of the T twenties. There is the tournament sponsors, our thanks to them and all of the Dish Home Fibernet team who've done such a good job at producing this series. I have to say the coverage has been quality. It's got better and better throughout the series. And I've had a lot of messages from back in Ireland who've enjoyed watching the action. Change of ends. Shahab Alam comes back in for his eighth, just the one over of Dev Canal. That will have pitched outside the leg stump. Is Rock going to keep counter-attacking here, keep playing his natural game against the spinners? I pretty much think so, Lenny. That's his natural game. He likes giving it back to the bowlers, doesn't allow the bowlers to put pressure. Just like that. The thing I've liked, Sachin, though, it's been, it's been quite measured aggression, isn't it? Yes, he's, he's hit a few big shots, but it's been calculated. And that's where I just felt that Gareth Delaney dismissal, particularly with having already lost four in the power play, the fact he was playing against the spin, looking to hit over, over long on. Okay, mid on was up in the circle. Others will argue well, he's trying to continue to play his natural game. He is a big hitter. But you look at, at 50 over cricket here at this ground, as Rock gets sent back. You've got such an opportunity. The best time to bat, 11.30, 12 o'clock. The last 10 or 15 overs, we've seen 100-plus runs regularly be taken from them. And you have to give yourself a chance to score in those overs by getting there. Initially, Hoey said yes, but good communication, and the hand goes out. Got sent back. Would have got home. Also, the throw could have been much better. Dave Canal, the culprit there. Gavin Hoey, Neil Rock. They're building this partnership in the Nepal A side that be wary of the fact that they could not chase that score of 157 runs. Sweeps this. Very flat. A couple of bounces and a boundary for Gavin Hoy. He's counter-attacking Shah Alam and not allowing him to settle even from the another end. Spoke to all 15 of the players in the squad before the series did a series of short interviews with them for the, the Irish Wolves touring team. And I asked them all about a player to watch. Five or six of them said Gavin Howey. You can see why. He's rich with potential, isn't he? Still very young, the son of the, the former Irish international, Connor Howey. He's a fine leg spinner himself and he was still rolling them out into his early 50s for Pembroke Cricket Club. But actually, his batting in many ways excites me too. I'm not taking away from his, his leg spin. It's, it's rich with potential. I think his batting has a huge amount of promise. And today could be the day that he, he really starts to show it in an Irish shirt. 20 of being bowled. We'll have a change of commentary now after this. I'll bid you farewell for the moment. 93 for 6.
So a partnership building slowly for the Ireland Wolves, 43 runs of 39 balls. Gavin Hoy there and Neil Rock has played the skipper's knock, 45 of 36. And Kamal Singh he has been brought back into the attack. Now some desperation here for Vinod Pandari. You think 93 for 6 still is a good st score to be at. But the fact is Nepal could not chase 157 in the first one day. Meanwhile, who joins me in the com box is Avash Ganar Gimide. Morning, Avash. Very good morning to you, Sachin. Yeah, what a game this. No one ex was expecting the score line to look like that. Whipped towards the onside. They'll take a single now. Slowly the momentum shifting towards the Island Wolves side. Yes, they've lost six wickets. But this partnership, 44, only 40 balls. And this is Kamal Singh Arya's hat-trick that he took in the first one there. Clean bold. And this was the third ball. A brilliant hat-trick. And this is how he wrapped up. The Ireland Wolves innings. What a, what a spell that was by young Kamal Singh Aidi. Yeah, ball six went three overs, giving away just 21 runs and took four wickets. In that process, he's trying to make a comeback in the senior team. That is going to help him a lot. And he deserves it as well, Avash. He was unlucky to miss out for a year or so because of injury. Had his collarbone broken. I was here in the commentary box when that happened was a terrible injury. And that's the issue with peace bowlers. They're injury prone. But this was while he was feeling. So Kamal Singh Aidi, this has been a great comeback story for him. Yeah. Goes after it, catches the call. Somebody getting underneath it and takes it eventually. Bashir Ahmed it is. And Neil Rock misses out. In his 50, yet again, it was not convincing in the first match. He was dismissed off the bowling of the same bowler, Kamal Singh Aidi. But this time, Kamal Singh Aidi has taken a clean wicket off the Ireland skipper. What a big wicket this. Neil should have left that one. Just let it go. He was batting really, really well. But now they've caught the big fish. And again, they can dream on. A big wicket. So who we are talking about and that's Neil Rock gone for 45 just missing out on by five runs on his half century in 30 deliveries in some trouble here yeah, 94 for seven now Ireland Further into trouble now, Liam McCarthy comes in to the center, 94 for 7. Good bowling first up. Testing McCarthy with a yoker. Good thinking from Kamal Singh Aidi. And you'll have to give it to Binod Bandari as well. The Nepal A captain has rotated his bowlers really well. He understood that the partnership was, build, was, was building. Knew the importance of getting that wicket off the Irish skipper Neil Rock and he brought in Kamal Singh Aidi brilliant captain see this driven but straight to the fielder for the first 10 over there you go Nandu he's got some cash he's enjoying it and his favorite player is captaining the Nepali team. What more do he want? And Sachin talking about this game, uh, Nepali managed to take five wickets in the first ten overs. So the next ten overs, only a wicket. And now they started off from the 20th with a wicket. 
Door delivery to end the 21st over 94 for 7. So Manhattan chart, the Ireland Wolves would not be happy with that at all, but Nepal A, they would take this. We're live from the TU International Cricket Ground in Kirtipur, the southern part of the Kathmandu Valley. And McCarthy has come in and all he has to do is give strike back to Gavin Hoy. He's looked really good as well, 18 of 21 for him. This, that partnership was looking very, very promising. But unfortunately for the Ireland Wolves, Neil Rock has been dismissed. Into his ninth over now, Shah Balam. He wants his swiper. And this is what we were talking about in the first initial overs. Shah Balam was bought into bowl the fifth from the fifth over and straight away started off with the wicket. The first dismissal of the game was all thanks to Shahab Alam. What a pinpoint feeling that was. Things haven't gone the Irish way in this game at the moment. Straight over on this and Gavin Hoy is very comfortable against the spinners as well. Crowd coming in. So that partnership of 44 runs between Gavin Hoy and skipper Neil Rock, the highest of the innings. A very sorry looking scorecard this has been for the Ireland Day side. Hint of turn driven, driven down the ground. Gavin Hoy, this is his first match. This one day series. And they're enjoying it. Cricket. With melons. It's a great combo. <coughs> it's a sunny day. It's not that bright. Uh, bit of haze in the sky. But has been sunny enough. Prediction of slight rain there, but I don't think we'll have it and the match will get disturbed at least before the completion of match because the way Ireland are going at this point of time, they've already lost seven wickets. Can Nepal bundle them out? Or... Tries to paddle it, went a little too square for his liking. And that was a risky shot to play, to be honest. Ah, enjoying the shades, especially. Youngsters coming in. He's showing his. The logo of his college there. Have you bunked your college for this match, young, young man? The principal won't be happy. Sachin, have you bunked your college in your days to watch cricket? My mom is watching this live and I'm a good kid at home, so no. <laughs> <laughs> that gives an answer. A pretty diplomatic one. Well, that's the end of the 22nd over. Ireland Wolves, 96 for 7. So that's 
the most unique flag in the entire world. Nepal's national flag. Crimson at the center. Blue in the borders. Sun and the moon. Beautifully designed. I've always been really very obsessed with Nepal's national flag. It's a brilliantly designed national flag, isn't it, Avash? Well, fact check. It's the most mathematically drawn flag as well. And that's, as you said, it's the unique in the world. There you go. They show them five net providing us free Wi-Fi. If you're here in the ground, you don't want to miss the match and your socials. This is the right place to come. We'll stop there. Mausam Dakal. He is a very good fielder as well. He took a very sharp catch in the previous match. Liam McCarthy, can he give company to his senior partner, Gavin Hoy? As I said, it has been really sunny. It's now getting a bit overcast. Another bouncer. Called wide. Rightly so, I believe. That's how it is. You can see the sky is a bit hazy. The sun is not that bright. It was really bright in the morning when I was there for the toss. But now it's getting a bit darker. And as I said, there is prediction of slight rain. And that's 3%. At the moment, but looking at the sky, this is some chunks of clouds there. But that won't be a worry for this game, I guess. Hundred up for the Island A team, the Island Wolves. They were fifty for six, and that partnership between Neil Rock, the skipper, and Gavin Hoy was still there. They produced forty-four runs, hundred for seven. Can they manage to get that score of 157? Can, can they get par of that score? That's what they managed in the first one days. That looks pretty unlikely at the moment. Already lost seven. The main man, Neil Rock, has already left the pitch. It's big responsibilities for Gavin Hoy and McCarthy. Try to play down all 50 overs, but that looks very unlikely at the moment. Shah Balam still has one over to go. That might do the trick for Nepal. Trying to yoke him up again should have been much closer to the stump. The off stump, Kamal Singh Aidi. There's a loud room, and that's the reason why Liam McCarthy. In fact, Gavin Hoy dug it in and then took that single. So this passes of play important for Nepal as well. They cannot go complacent. They cannot allow the Ireland A team to get those boundaries or those scores, those runs. Nepal have not been really confident with the bat as well in this ODI series. Well defended this time. Todd delivery to end the sixth over of Kamal Singh ID. 101 for seven. So Bashir Ahmed has been introduced for the first time. He had a bit of problem with consistency, especially his length was on the shorter side, allowing the batters to punish him towards the onside.
and he gets some wickets. I mean, this is an opportunity for Bashir as well. He's been a little too expensive. Seven and over, he's gone. Gave 28 runs in four overs. He was wicketless as well. Maybe lacked a bit of confidence in the first game. And make a comeback. No run, no run. Again. He was short again. Fortunately for him, Kevin Hoy could not hit that ball off the middle of the bat. Now Shahab probably will have a word as well. Just bowl a bit fuller. You'll get wickets. Trust me. That's what Shahab must be telling to Basir. Short again. I mean, this kind of deliveries won't give him wickets. So it doesn't matter if he bowls one or two full, uh, full tosses or even half volleys. But deliveries like this will not help him, help him to get uh, that important wicket that he wants for his, that he wants for himself. Well, thanks to his teammate, he can go for, he can risk some deliveries, as you said, some full toss as well. He needs to pitch the ball more fuller. It's getting easier for these two batsmen to play him at the moment. Now, Liam McCarthy in no hurry at all. All he has to do is give the strike back to Gavin Hoy, who is looking good, 22 of 31. He's played risk-free cricket, Gavin Hoy. He's getting the ball to turn as well, but because the length is so short, it's not troubling the batters at, at all. He'll have to look to bring the batters on the front foot. And that is the reason why I think Bashir Ahmed needs to have a conversation with uh, the captain. The captain should go and tell him, you know, ball a bit fuller. You, you're getting too short and there's no way you, you're getting a wicket from that length. Well, I think what... Ah, trying to play that reverse sweep. And I think what Shah Alam did, uh, just a few deliveries before, went to the bowler and had a conversation. Didn't go according to the plan. No harm's done, though. Much better this, isn't it, from Bashir? <coughs> Much fuller. Much better. Look at that. The amount of turn there was an optimistic shout, all right. But encouraging stuff here for Bashir Ahmed. Only one run off the first over of his. 24 gone, 102 for 7. So 24 overs gone, Kevin Hoy and McCarty at the center. No Kate Carmichael today. It was a shocker initially because he got to that 50 in the first, ma in the first match. He was the highest scorer in Mausam Dakal in operation. Again, short and wide and nothing delivery really. Lucky, it's lucky escape this for... Takal. I think Nepali should go for at least for the next five overs for an aggressive approach. Try to finish the innings as soon as possible. You've taken early wickets, you've done wonderfully well. Why do you need to waste your time allowing the opponent to play and settle in? And meanwhile, the Irish side, they should look to get to at least 150. Swept really well. Had he missed it, it would have been trouble for Liam McCarthy. It was well timed, as he said. If he missed it, it would have been a problem there, Sachin. 
And if you notice, Shahab Alam is everywhere today. Everywhere yeah. the ball goes, even with the ball in his hand, and everywhere he goes, Shahab Alam is everywhere. And to our audiences, this is my friend with long hair. <laughs> How many years since you've had a haircut, Avash? Oh, I think it was uh, since the COVID lockdown, the first one. I got a chance to not go to the barber. And since then, I have kept my hairs long, and that has been some kind of identity for me lately. You know what? Somebody would be really jealous of it. Is our co-commentator Andrew? <laughs> he loves his look, though. Absolutely. He loves more and more people to go bald. That's what he said on air. <laughs> now that's some interesting conversation he just started. He likes people calling him Taklu Dai. It was a straight one. Good delivery that by Mausam Dakal. Four runs off this over, four singles. Easily played. Five runs off this over of Mausam Dakal. The score now 107 for seven. So 13 runs of 27 balls, this partnership. Can they drag Ireland to a score of somewhere around 160? Slapped it. Good feeling there. Arif is performing well in the field as well. Scored. A magical 93 runs in the final ODI, a uh, final T20. And Gavin Hoy has certainly slowed down after the dismissal of his captain. Can they build another partnership? McCarty has looked confident as well. Short again, Bashir Ahmed. He pulled some really good deliveries at the end of his first over. Again, started with a few long hops. Lucky that he was not counter-attacked by the Irish batters. hundred and eight for seven. Pulls it. It has been quite a while now since the pair of Hoy and McCarty have not been able to produce boundaries. Again, a touch shorter. If Bashir can bowl it a touch full and towards the stump, he's getting some balls to turn as well. That's what he should be looking to do. And these two are dealing with the bowlers pretty easily now. Last ball of the over. Much like it. Much like it. End of 26th. 
सेवन डाउन फॉर वन वन जीरो So a silent phase in this match after the dismissal of Captain Rock. Island Wolves were rocked by the Nepali bowlers 50 for 6. They were at one point of time and then 44 runs partnership in between Gavin Hoy and Neil Rock. That's Kalam Ali, Nepali coach. He would not be very disappointed at all. In fact, he would be happy with the performance with the ball. And Mosam Takal has picked up a wicket, but he's looked a bit inconsistent with his line and length. Was very consistent. Was Shah Balam got three important wickets? First up, enough is enough, says Gavin Hoy, and that whip off the wrist has made sure that the ball has gone all the way. In fact, more than all the way. Oh, this is a huge hit, humongous shot. This. See, this is what I was talking about in the previous over. Don't let these two batsmen settle in. Just took it on the bounce, picked it well. No chance for the fielder. And even the spectators couldn't catch that one. It's not a full swing of his arms, of his shoulders. It's swing of... More of swing of his forearms and wrist. And gives the ball that whip. Gavin Hoy now, he's got that start. Can he convert this into a big one? 30, 34 now of 42 deliveries. Well, the first five wickets, they just managed to score 39 runs. And since then, the next two wickets, they've, been managed, they've managed to score 78 runs. Now, the Island Wolves are making a comeback, slow and steady. It was googly. Now this will put a lot of confusions in the mind of young Mosam Dakal because he's been on the shorter side and the one he bowled the fuller delivery was hammered for a six. So playing with the mind of young Mosam Dakal there, Gavin Hoy. And now all McCarty needs to do is give this single and strike back. Take singles and give the strike back to Gavin Hoy. Close to the stump, wide called, rightly slow, rightly so. Well, Mosom Dhakal was the only bowler who bowled full 10 overs in the previous game, giving away 50 runs, but managed to pick two wickets as well. I think I just thought for a moment that it hit the pad on its way, but no, says the umpire. So good over this, and you see the runs given by Mosam Dakal. He's already given 40 runs in 5.5 overs. Isn't isn't a good sign. You understand that it's very difficult to master the art of leg spin, and it's a tough art. A thought liberty in this over. We'll come back to it after the break. 27 gone, 118 for seven. I 
So that's the bowling chart. Mosum Dagal, he's just bowled his sixth. He's been in the expensive side, 6.67 his economy rate. He's given away 40 runs. He's taken one wicket all right. But that's so much because he's been inconsistent with the length. He started very poorly, bowled some long hops. And Bashir Ahmed, his bowling figures also may suggest that he's bowled really well, but I think he started poorly too. too. The length was right, the line was not swept, only a single. Well, to be honest, Basir Ahmad bowled the previous over when Ireland had just lost a wicket in the previous over. That helped him get those run down. Still, he's not sure about his... Don't see him that confident in this game, coming into this game. A little better than the previous one. Needs to improve. If he takes a wicket now, that's going to add up to his confidence. You see, much better. Every time he's bowled full, he's got turn. He's made the batters to struggle against him. Catches the call. Just short of the fielder there. Just need to improve the length he's bowling at at the moment. Bowling a bit shorter. Gavin Hoy. Now that's a good score. 35 or 44 deliveries. He's taking the charge now. McCartney wonderfully rotating the strike. Another partnership slowly building now, and this has been whipped again. Gavin Hoy, when he hits, it remains hit. Such a beautiful flow of the bat, this. He's got very strong wrist. You can see here, it's, it's the whip that he gets his wrist to roll at the last moment. That's what generates a lot of power. Went for that appeal. Easily denied by the umpire. 20 had gone, 124 for 7. So, 30 runs partnership of 45 balls now. Another partnership that's threatening to build. Can Nepal break this partnership like they built the previous one between the skipper and Gavin Hoy? Full toss. Mosum Dakal's struggle continues. See, Sachin, Nepal is a bit relaxed at the moment. This should show some kind of an aggression to get more wickets, tempt, gamble more, tempt the batsmen to come out and play those shots. They can need wickets at the moment, as we saw in the previous game. Ah, <laughs> would we call that a chance of a catch? Well, that was struck ferociously, not even a half chance, that's what I believe. But we've seen those getting caught. <laughs> Wonderful game this cricket, isn't it? On occasions like that, the ball has to stick into your hands and there's nothing you can do because the reflex time is almost zero there. On the ground again, and Liam McCarthy is playing a great role, supporting his partner Gavin Hoy, and he can also get those boundaries. This was hit like an arrow; it was straight as an arrow. Straight at this time, 
That's what I was just about to say. See, now the pressure will be building on Nepal. Not the biggest of pressures, but they had Ireland Wolves in their grip at a point. It's just like we mentioned from over 10 to 20. They just managed to take one wicket from since 20. Now on, another one. Agas Mosum has come from around the wicket now. He will be angling, angling into the left-handed Liam McCarthy. Can he turn it away with his googlies? Slight turn there again. He's getting the turn. The only problem has been his in inconsistency. Especially with the length. Awesome Takal. Not finding that right. The area where he wants to bowl. It's up in his head. It's not being executed at the moment. They ran this quick single. They hesitated initially, but then they got that single comfortably. Another expensive over by Mausam Dakal. Already eight runs off it. One more delivery to go. Gavin Hoa, 40 or 47 now. The second highest scorer so far for his team. Again slaps it. Back past the baller. Where has this gone? This has gone for a boundary as well. Two boundaries in this over. Another expensive over by Mosam. The score after 29, 136 for 7. Reason Dakal has been reintroduced. Mosam Dakal, the other Dakal, has been really expensive. He's taken a wicket, given away only 11 runs in his first three overs. And to all our fans watching, they must be wondering, you, you must be wondering, the same venue, the same tracks, produced scores of over 200 in a T20 contest. And this is one day cricket where you get 50 overs and look at the score. They've lost seven wickets, scoring only 136. And Nepal could not even chase 157 in the first match. It's a funny game, isn't it, cricket? Yeah. Well, scoreline tells a story, but the storyline is different. We've got a lot of plot twist in this one. Early wickets, then it's some good partnership. <laughs> Captain playing his innings, and now Lim McCarthy is taking the charge along with Hoy, who's batting comfortably at 44 of 48 deliveries. Now, this is a good partnership again being built between them, these two batsmen. That was the boundary of the last ball of Mosam Dagal, both mid on and mid off inside the circle. So once he got past the umpire, that was a certain boundary and it was hit with some power and that's Valley Express. You can crunch your hunger. You've got stalls in here. I wonder if you will get that in the com box in the launch time. Well, the money has to be from your pocket, Avash. I wouldn't mind that. We treat you guys with such amazing chicken fries. 136 for 7, the score. Island A, can they manage to get to that score of 200? Can they fancy that? Because this partnership, 42 or 53 balls. Bounce this by reason. Called wide, very late. Reason Dakal is not an express piece by any stretch of imagination, but he banged this shot. 
Liam McCarthy was not very comfortable against it as well. Rightly called a wide by the umpire. But the idea was right by Rizan Akal. The umpire took his time to give that. No proper connection, only a single. As I said, Avash, five out of the six innings in the T20 contest between these two went for a score of over 200. Maybe they're still hung over by the <laughs> T20 matches. When we were coming in the morning, there's someone telling us, this is going to be over early today as well. And the gentleman might seem to be right. Well, Ireland, they batted till the 39th over in the previous game. Was there an edge? Completely beaten Gavin Hoy. This was a wonderful delivery by young Dakal. And Arjun Shao, if you look at him, he was quick enough to throw the ball to the stumps. And talking about Arjun South and Sachin Timulsin and the com box, there was one beautiful line that you said, my friend, which went viral on the internet. You made MS Tony proud. Sachin, I, literally, my friend, I got goosebumps when I heard it for the first time. That's a single into our viewers. That was when Arjun produced a cartwheel. It was Sikandar Raza's throw and was wonderfully constructed run out. I use the word constructed because he was so aware of the situation. He had to put in acrobatics to get that wicket. And I just had that thing in my mind because we'd seen Amazon do that. And then it was all over the internet, as you said, Avash. Try to look for two, but it'll get a single, and that ends the over number 30. Ireland A, 140 for seven. Shahab Alam is just the one over left and I think he's going to be called upon now leg slip in place really good partnership this for the 8th wicket Liam McCarthy and Gavin Howey have batted very maturely Howey's looked ever so good isn't he probably the, the pick of the batters thus far today all the way down at number 8 I do just wonder if Howey may follow a Steve Smith style route in years to come in terms of starting out as a, a leg spinner at the top level and maybe evolving into a batter. Not taking away from his leg spin bowling, but he's looked so good with the bat, hasn't he? He's picked the ball up very cleanly and crisply and assessed the length very well. And scored fluently too. He's a dangerous hitter, really is. And he's given Ireland some real life in this contest. Neil Rock made 45, Hoey on 45. A 
Vash, this has been a really good fight back given what you would probably describe as some fairly injudicious shots, particularly in a 50-over contest earlier in the innings for the Wolves. Rightly said. At a point, Ireland A were looking like they would not even cross the 100 runs mark. And a few overs ago, Sachin and I were discussing if they would be able to cross their last game's mark of 157 runs. It looked unlikely at that point when just the seventh wicket fell. But now, Gavin Hoy and McCarthy have stabilized the innings. And I was. We were in conversation, Sachin and me. Should Nepal go for some more aggressive bowling at the moment? They need to get those three wickets done. I just think one of the problems has been the lack of output from Bashir. Damn it. Really mature batting from these two. They've recognized that Chahabalam is the threat and, and how he's seen him off here. McCarthy will just have one ball to deal with. Last 10 to 50, 15 overs of any 50 over contest here at the TU, you get huge reward as a batter. You can score it in excess of 9, 10 runs per over very comfortably. Elevation about 1400 meters up, the ball flies and the surface is flattened out. Alam, last delivery. Swept around the corner. Be a single to close out a lamb spell. He's bowled excellently. Ten overs, three for 35. 31 bowled, one for three for seven. Well, Shahabalam may be just a little niggle with the finger. So he's going to go off. We'll see subfielder come on. Get a look at the best of his spell in a few moments. Rupesh Singh, the 12th man. As he'll get some treatment from the physio. Rijan Dakal will continue. McCarthy and, and Hoey have played really impressively, but... It's the way in which they've just knocked the ball around, taken very little risk. Are they putting a few of their senior order batters to shame with this 50-run partnership? Excellent stuff. Well, rightly said. And this is what you need to do. We were discussing the same in the previous game when Nepal was batting. And these two gentlemen have done a fine job of not taking that risk. Have gone for some boundaries and sixes, but made sure they haven't allowed the bowlers to put pressure on them. Shorter, and that's pulled. And that is a boundary. Gavin Hoy completes his 50 or 55 deliveries. What a way to get to your 50. Well, a superb innings. One of real high quality. 50 or 55 balls. Remember, he came to the crease with his team in all sorts of trouble. They were 50 for six when he entered. He's made 50 off 55 with a minimum of fuss. He's shown his power in there, but he's also shown his poise. Seven boundaries. And lots of measured defense as well alongside it. Really impressive from Gavin Hoey. Now, this is where you start to get your reward as a batter. You're getting close towards that midday marker. It's 10 to 12 right now, local time. This is the best time of the day to bat. He's done all the hard work. Can he cash in? Could he double this up? He must, and he needs to big responsibilities when he came out to bat and he has proved himself at the moment and if he goes for a hundred we have a match in hand we're still uncertain what the Nepali batting innings will look like because as we saw in the previous game it just crumbled after the first partnership ended nice cutter from Dakal just like the way in which he's assessed the deliveries to attack so that one there for example a little off cutter, not in his hitting zone, so he knows not to play aggressively at it. You think of the slog sweep against Shahab Alam when he went that little bit fuller. The short ball there from Dakal pulled away for four. 
Big six over long on as well. He really is something special, doesn't he, Gavin Howey? Absolutely. With Shah Balam completing his 10 overs, that's an advantage for Ireland A. Ah, uh, that might just miss the leg stump. No, no, it's pitched outside leg here. That's the challenge for Dakal. To get an LBW, you have to get the ball to straighten. And rightly, the umpire is saying to Nepal, ball's pitched, what, a foot to foot and a half outside leg. And they've got overly enthusiastic with the appeal. They need a wicket, I understand that. But that was a very good decision and a rather silly appeal, to be honest. They got it carried away there. Pitch miles outside leg. That shows the, how desperate this team is, Nepal, eh, for a wicket. Seven fell for 110. And this partnership, 54 runs, solid partnership. Still going strong. Ah, oh, that's in the air. Feel the coming under it. And that's gone. And he takes it. Cool and calm. Well, this is a sensational catch. Rupesh Singh is on as a subfielder. We just saw him come on for Shahab Alam. It's the first time maybe how he's misjudged one. It was the cutter. We were just praising him for his shot selection. He's taken on Midan, who was up in the circle. He's furious with himself walking off. This is such a good catch because he's run 15, 20 yards over his shoulder. And look at how he's had to adjust. He didn't pick it up at first. He had to go sharply to his right. Oh, that's a quite sensational grab. The most difficult catch in the game is the one going over your shoulder. Oh, he's gone for a sparkling 50, but his dismissal has changed the game again. We're going to have a second drinks break. And the Irish Wolves have fallen to 148 for eight. Kamal Singh Ayri into the attack just on the stroke of the second drinks break. Ireland keeps seeming to lose wickets at just the wrong time. Gavin Howe, who played so brightly and we were just praising his shot selection, his calculated aggression, 
He's just gone after one. He might have picked it as the cutter, but it wasn't quite full enough. That's the new man, Tom Mays. He's in at number 10. We'll get a look at the wicket after this ball. Problem for Ireland is Tom Mays and Matthew Humphreys won't add a huge amount with the bat, and we've seen Kamal Singari run through the tail in the first game with the hat trick. He'll be looking to do the same again. Maybe Ireland won't get past that 157. Amazing how topsy turvy this series has been. It's just seesaw, doesn't it, throughout? And what a way to start for Tom Mays. Right out of the screws for a single. Let's get a look at the wicket again. Did Gavin Howey just think this was a little fuller than he, he's ended up judging it? The angle will get us a better view, but for now, let's talk about the catch. As you said earlier, he had to change his direction. And when the ball's taken that elevation, and look at the time at the moment, it's around 12 noon, and the sun is right up there. It's a difficult one to take, and what a impression by Rupesh Singh, the substitute fielder. And I'll tell you something, that's... That's as good a catch as you'll see. It really is. It's not spectacular in terms of a man leaping through the air one-handed. It might not be the viral clip-up of a boundary catch where you catch it, you jump back over, you come back in. But in terms of a degree of difficulty of a catch to take, that's about as tricky as you'll see. I scale that right up towards a 9 out of 10 difficulty, and he's made it look easy. I'm not quite sure how he's made that ground across to his right after misjudging it at first. Outstanding. And a big wicket in the context of the game. Yeah, this can be the turning point of the game for Nepal. Talking about the partnership that Hoy along with McCarthy were building up. Now a new batsman on the crease. They have the chance to finish off soon. Ireland they just seven runs short of what they had put on in the previous game. Seems like to be a similar story. McCarthy's played nicely. He's definitely more than a lower order player. You can see his all-round skills. How much support can he get from Tom Mays and then Matthew Humphreys to follow? Mays must not take any risk at the moment. Just what Lim McCarthy did when Hoy was there playing those shots. Now the responsibility is on Lim McCarthy's shoulders and Mays just needs to rotate the strikes. They've done wonderfully well. They've protected their wicket, especially after losing five wickets within those 39 runs. Looks for the Yorker, but doesn't quite get it in where he'd like. The 150's come up, but Ireland, the Wolves, they still have 17 overs to bat. Can they do it? 150 for eight, the score. Two wickets remain for Ireland to work with. What can McCarthy and Mays and Humphreys to follow come up with? Rajan Dakal is going to continue. He's been impressive again. I like the way he's taken to his ball. I'm going to come around the wicket now. He's a little off cutters that he bowls with real fluency. That's the one that caught Howie short. If Ireland could get to 180, 190, do we have a contest on? Doesn't look to be many demons in the surface to me. It is turning. Yeah, if Hoy was there, it would have been a chance. Such a, uh, that was Hoy's innings that we are looking at. Now, this is some good cricket here by Ireland. Bombs and sixes that you're looking at on your screens. 
back live with you now. Big play and a miss outside the off stump. Yeah, you certainly feel as though, I think in the review, Scott Irvine, Ryan Eagleson will be looking at some of the shot selection. I know you want to play positive cricket, but given the 300 deliveries you have to work with, look at the number of boundaries they've hit. They've hit plenty of them. But there's just been, for me, a few too many giveaway strokes as well. Maybe only one or two that haven't given it away. But now they've got to find a way to rebuild, find a way to, to take it to the third power play, get into the 40th to 50th over. Who's going to score the runs today for Nepal? They were lacking the other day with the top order. Who's going to stand up? It all starts with Dave Canal. And should learn a lesson from the previous one. He was batting really well. Should not risk it because as it seems the score will be a bit low than we expected for a 50 over cricket inside this time they'll get a single Dev Kanal feeling there talking about the batting for Nepal it hasn't been all wonders in the first game for well, the Interesting thing is, the first wicket and the eighth wicket partnership lasted for 35 and 34 runs, respectively. I'd be really surprised if Nepal A come out and, and bat with the same scale of aggression that they did in the first game. It, it was really helter-skelter. It's going to be a wide down the leg side, just for a moment. The keeper will have felt as though he was in the game for a stumping, but he's done well. To cut it off, you think of all the strokes. Oh, lovely to see the Nepal flag in the face paint. The beauty, Big nervous smile, a nervous smile. Ah, there's maybe older brother or dad in as well. The beautiful smile, the innocent, beautiful smile. And looking at this, does it feel like Vinod Bhandari is lacking the bowling options at the moment? Here's that cutter, look at that. It's gone like an off break, isn't it? Brilliant glove work. Hard to explain how difficult this would have been for Arjun Saud. Look at that. Adjusts really well. Takes it up high above his hip. A wonderfully bold. Can see some turns. They need to capitalize on that. And looking at the score right now, it's 153 for 8. Maybe Nepal just given away a lot of runs. It was 93 for 6 at a moment. Previously 39 for 5. Well played. It'll be a dot ball to win the over. Num over number 34 is done. Ireland A 153 for 8. Hundred and fifty three for eight. Alindi. Kamal Singh Ayri comes on to ball. He's eighth over. Has taken a wicket, given away just twenty seven runs. With discipline bowling. Now what Nepal would give for two quick wickets. I just can't see them approaching the chase in the same way that they did. Guy and Mala, the head coach, is such an experienced player. And he was so good, wasn't he? At absorbing pressure when he batted. No doubt the review from the Nepal A side with Guy and Mala, with Kalam Ali, with Rajan Shah, the team analyst. It must have been, we just need to bat time. They'd even batted 40 overs in that chase. They would have won the game at a canter. But they kept playing their shots. They kept looking for the big hits. And it proved very costly. They'd love a similar chase now in terms of the volume of runs that they need to get to. To do that, they'll need two quick wickets. They need to finish it off early. As, we, as I said earlier, they've given a away a lot of runs. They've let partnerships to be built. But looking at this Nepali squad, 
So we're talking about the bowling options at the moment. I mean, no, no prolific bowler that can come in and guarantee you that wicket we've seen in especially past that 10 over mark. And I think it's a perfect game for a Nepal A being the reserve side. Uh, he's pulled that one. We'll find a fielder. Bit of fumble. They'll collect one. And looking at this squad, Lenny, I think this is the perfect game to play with a team like Ireland A. They're getting wonderful experience and big exposure. Two sides couldn't have been any closer matched either. I know Ireland won the T20 series. They easily could have lost it, even though they posted record T20 totals in their history of 222 followed by 224 a couple of days later. Both of those totals could have been chased. In fact, Nepal A needed 225 to win. They were well ahead of the required rate for the vast majority of the chase. It's a powerful shot into the leg side, but there's protection out there. Again, will just be a single. And then into the 50 over contest. Nepal A will really feel as though they should be 1 0 up. They dominated, what, 70%, 80% of that contest. But it's just brilliant exposure, like you said, for those just in and around the verges of the national team. I think you're right. I think Arif Sheikh and Kamal Singhari will be making big claims to maybe get into that senior side for the ACC Premier, the T20 World Cup that follows it. Too short this time will be signals as a wide. And maybe someone like Rijan Dakal, he's really impressed me. He could press Pratish GC in that senior squad. And then we all know of the potential of Dev Canal. He's just got to start showing it a bit more consistently. So far in the first and this one day matches, we've seen the bowlers have done the job quite well for Nepal. But the problem lied in the batting department. Seven players only scoring in single figures. Three ducks, two golden ducks out of that. It was down to Saab Alam and Region Dakal who tried to get off. Uh, that's hit again. Will be collected. He's hit three hook shots with real quality timing. He's a big tall man, Tom Mays. I'm not sure if that is what the analyst has said. We need to bowl short to Mays. I would have thought full and straight, given that's the way his hat trick came, Camel Singer. He would be a better way to go. Fans just filling up the banks and they'll be praying for a Nepal A win to give us a, a big grand decider. It's what the series deserves on Sunday. But the Irish Wolves would be hoping that's not the case. And you have to remember that if they get up to 180, 190, could still have a game in her hands. Goes fuller this time. McCarthy keeps it out. 35 bold, 15 remain. 158 for eight. So, 15 overs left. One of the challenges for Binad Bandari, despite finding such success with all of his bowlers, Shahab Alam, the left arm spinner, the pick of the bowlers, is bowled out. And Mausam Dakal has been very expensive. He's gone at 7.5 and, and over. 7 overs for 52 for him. Just clipped away for a single. Get a quick, quick look at the bowling card here. So. Kamal Singh Ari's only got two left. Rijan Dakal's bowled really nicely. He's going to have to think about turning to either a Dev Canal, a Bashar Ahmed, or maybe an Arif Sheikh quite shortly. Well, I think at the moment, the Canal's introduction could do some difference because he just bowled one over, and these two batsmen, especially, they're not used to his bowling. So maybe he can be that solution for another wicket for Nepal A. Well, that's nicely worked away, but a little fortunate it's only four or five yards in front of Kamal Singh Iri. It takes a long time to get the throw in, just a single uh, to McCarthy. 
Well, they're just doing the writing at the moment. I'll and A. There you go. Nandu's doing some business. That a boy, Nandu Dai. Come up and see you in the innings interval. He must have some selection of cricket shirts at home. I see him in a different one every time. I wonder, can we get him an Ireland Wolves one? That might be a nice idea. That looked lovely on him. Would he wear that? Would he, or is he, is he that ardent a Nepal fan? He'd only wear a Nepal one. Well, it's uh, all up for Nandu for, uh, to answer that. <laughs> you should do an interview, especially uh, for Nandu. Yeah, one of the great super fans always here at the TU International Cricket Ground. Great to have young and old in, enjoying the action. Beautiful day. It's heating up as well. Only 26, 27 degrees now. Mm, lots of happy faces enjoying their cricket as always. Bowls him. Think it might be chopped on. And Mays is going to have to depart. Rijan Dakal's been outstanding today. He really has. He went full into the block hole. Think it's an inside edge. All he can do is force it back onto his own stumps. What a time to get a wicket. He has done the magic region. Look at that. Ah, inside edge. Straight onto the stumps. Yeah. Middle, stump. Middle one. That is a sound that delights the bowler. Big wicket this for Nepal. One more to go. Maze 5 of 9. Ireland 160 for 9. Just Matthew Humphreys left for Ireland. He's in at number 11. Well ball, well ball, well ball. I think if memory serves correctly, it was a first ball duck for him the other day. It certainly was for Ben White as part of that hat trick. He's already done better than the other day. And Ireland have crossed the mark. They scored 157 runs in the previous game. Just three runs more than that in this match. A bit of a cloud above. Gives the player some ease from the sun. It was indeed a first ball duck. Second wicket of that hat trick. Hey! A off cutter. Outstanding skills. Uh, Rijan Dakal making a big statement in this series. Alongside Shahab Alam, for me, the two best Nepali bowlers on show thus far. 36 ball, 160 for nine. Well, the Wolves are in big trouble of being bowled out in consecutive matches. And McCarthy, you suspect he might have a shift now, will he? He's batted very sensibly, very measured. Do you think because it's Humphreys at the far end, he's going to start throwing the bat around? Yeah, I think the target should be Humphreys. Like Dale in the coming in last wicket. McCarthy has will settle there. Will be difficult. 
to target him. There you go, the clouds hovering just above the ground, but they don't look so dangerous. Chances of rain, only 3%. We're not having any rain, mate. I can assure you of that. <laughs> yeah, the Irish can make it rain anywhere. Recently, they had a game washed out in Sharjah, of all places. That was against <laughs> Afghanistan. And in fact, Ireland and Scotland were both in town. Scotland were playing a game the same day up the road. The big joke is Irish people, Scottish people, we can bring the rain to the driest of deserts. There's the ninth wicket to fall. He was playing a little bit away from his body, wasn't he? Uh, Tom Mays. But Dakal's deserved that. Three for, for him now. One more to go for Nepal. They can wrap up the innings. Short one again. They will get a single. And this is what they've been good at, Ireland. They've taken the singles. They've rotated that strike. Good partnership being built. We've already saw in this game. They've done a good job once again. The bowlers taken those early wickets and as we mentioned previously time and again 39 runs given away in first 10 overs taken five wickets but the next 10 overs were a different story it was 93 for six nice he bowled top of off that's where you want to be maybe even get it a little fuller to Humphreys Try and burst through those defences again and make it 160 odd to win, to square the series. That's what Nepal wants to do. That's what everybody need, wants, I guess. Not just people here in Nepal, but Ireland too. Making the last game look like a final. Not so sure about that. I think some back in Ireland will want a 3-0 whitewash if they can. <laughs> but I think the series would deserve it, joking aside. I, I think really it's been such an excellent tour. That's the Yorker that time. Good skills from Kamal Singh Ayri. The series deserves a grand finale on Sunday. I have to say, if, if Nepal could chase this total down, I, I think Sunday would be too close to call. And Nepal, they bowled just the way they did in the first game. They've taken that wickets and now they've almost restricted their opponent to a low total. And they have to learn from the mistakes, especially in the batting department from the previous game. They played some unwanted shots, and as we previously mentioned, seven out of those dismissals were eight dismissals were caught out. We'll talk about that after this over. 37 gone, 161 for nine, Ireland. That's not the result you want, is it? Don't want a single from the first ball. Now Humphreys is five to face from Rijan Dakel. And this is a good opportunity for Nepal to finish off this bowling innings. Just a wicket to go. Rijan, he wants his number four. All well. Into his eighth over, giving away 26 runs and taking three wickets. And in his previous over, got the big man, big wicket. It's one to go now. Really nicely bowled. I tell you, great reactions from Arjun Saud here because he's misjudged this. He, he thought it was going to bounce higher, I think, at first, almost swaying out of the way. Don't know how he's got two hands to that. More good skills from the keeper. He was a bit hesitant, Humphreys, wasn't he? Was not sure to either go for the shot or not. 
Lucky there. The ball didn't go on. Brush off the bat. To the pads this time. Humphreys gets his first run. And that will please McCarthy no end. You really you suspect that this chase for Nepal, if it's going to be something in the 160, 170, 180 region, should heavily favour them. I don't see demons in this pitch. Well, this is... You never know. Actually, I don't have an answer to that. 63 for 9. Still, there are overs. If can, they can bat. Maybe for the next five overs at least, they can put up a good total. There is turn on offer, there's no doubt. We've seen that, we tend to see that here. Whatever the case, Shahab Alam in particular was getting it to turn quite sharply. And Humphreys will be a threat again. There's no Ben White today, so it'll have to be Gavin Howey that will provide the support for the left arm spinner. But I don't think there's anything that would make you not comfortable and confident about a three and a half runs per over chase. You have 50 overs to get it done. You just need to take your time, back your batters, and make it 1 1. Almost beat the batsman. Humphreys now out of danger at the moment. Liam McCarthy will be on strike. Four runs in this over already. He would love a wicket in the last ball of his over. Allende, what they've done is they've stretched this innings. That is wonderful to watch. Just like you said, this is a 50 overs game and they happily like a 50 overs game despite losing the wickets. Good attempt there, but it will be an easy single to end the over. 38 done. Ireland a 166 for 9. <laughs> So, Rijan Dakal, eight overs, three for 30. He'll be bowling there with his namesake. Mausam Dakal is going to be given a turn. No relation between these two. Very different kinds of bowlers as well. One a right arm. Wrist spinner, full of mystery, full of unorthodox nature, and then the left arm seamer who's been the pick of the bowlers today. For me, Mason Dackel has just tried a bit too much, isn't he? A little bit too much variety, but this is where wrist spinners can be so good. Two tail enders at the crease, although Liam McCarthy's batted really nicely. And a chance for him to get second wicket starts with a googly, a beauty. Beats the outside edge. Look at the turn he got there. Liam McCarthy will now be in pressure. The turn, maybe also because of the angle he's bowling. The turn was exceptional. But, so that's over the wicket. He goes to the googly again. This has been the problem for Dakal, inconsistency. It's all well and good being able to bowl those world-class mystery balls that do everything. So the previous ball, in the books, it's a dot. Tries to repeat the dose, doesn't pitch it anywhere near as good. Swept away for four. Nepal, they will be kicking themselves. I can sense it, Lenny, at the moment. They've given away a lot of runs. They've given the Ireland batsmen time to settle in. When they were taking quick wickets, that is not what you do. Well, I suspect he's probably bowled too many googlies. Another one gets slashed away for four. It's too predictable for Mausam Dakal. Trust your leg break. It's not what he's doing. Change of angle. Same result this time into the offside. Really good batting from Liam McCarthy. Back-to-back -back boundaries. This is the reason why they should not put him into strike. 
He's keeping him in the North Strikers and try to target the other man. That is where your wicket is. Aren't these the basics, Lenny? Just stick to your basics. It's another googly. This time it comes off a top edge. Could it be the tenth wicket? It will be. So it's cost them eight, but the turn to the mystery spin has worked. The reliance on the googly has worked. McCarthy's going to be devastated with that. He's just hit two boundaries, and now he's been dismissed. Advantage to Nepal. They've done plenty right in that first innings. Ireland well under par for me again today, even though they've got more than they did in the first game. It's McCarthy, the last man to fall for 35. And the Irish Wolves have been bowled all out again in a similar length of time, this time with 174 on the board. Uh, finally, Bashir Ahmad takes that catch. They were looking for that final wicket for a while now. 174. But I still say this, Lenny, they've given away maybe 50 more runs than they should have. Good innings comes to an end. Ireland Wolves 174 all out in 38.4 overs. I yeah, understand your point, but I think it's massive advantage in Nepal. Eh? You told them this morning that having won the toss and chosen to bowl first, they bowl the Wolves out for 174. They need 175 to take the series. They'd have bitten your hand off for it. It's not a bad batting surface out there. Playing on the same square where we saw 200 plus in five of the six T20 games. I think some naive batting at points from Ireland, some really poor shot selection. And much like Nepal's chase the other day, far too much aggression for me. It's another side bowled all out, well inside their 50 overs. In the first game, they were bowled out in 38.3. Today, it's 38.4. Very, very similar. Pick of the batter is Gavin Hoey by a distance. Batted beautifully for his 50, but good contributions too from Neil Rock who played aggressively, the Irish captain. And 35, a good rear guard from Liam McCarthy all the way down at number nine. Well, the other eight won't want to see that scorecard. Not great. Just three players doing their job. More with 17. That was, that's what other numbers look like. Single digit, which are not helping. Get a look at the best of the batting highlights now. You'll actually see plenty of boundaries within this package, which makes it all the more perplexing that Ireland have yet again not batted their overs. You see you know, there's a little flourish from PJ Moore. He had three boundaries in his 17 to start, including a couple of beautiful clips off his legs. But then after that, it was all about Neil Rock, wasn't it? He hit three fours and three sixes. And you'll see a sparkling of Gavin Howey to follow him. Just the one boundary for Fionn Han. That was that clip off the legs. Plenty of aggression from Rock and a bit more measure and poise from Gavin Howey who started very nicely. And that partnership was everything for Ireland. The score they have at the moment, 174 runs on the board. At that time, the wickets were falling like anything. 39 for 5 they were at. And then looking at some more shots, some boundaries and this was another maximum. Well, that was one of the shots of the day, wasn't it? Shades of Owen Morgan in that inside out stroke for six. Yeah, poor old Mason Daco was very expensive today. Went in the best part of eight runs per over. Two for 60 he finished with. But he was taking a liking to. That was the biggest hit of the day. A monster from Gavin Howey. Right the way towards the very top of the grass banks. Just like the way he picked up the length nicely. Hit cleanly through the off and the leg side down the ground too. Seven boundaries for the all-rounder. Highest score of the day, 50 coming from 59 balls at number eight. And without his 50 and Liam McCarthy's 35 that had three boundaries in it. Well, it could have been a lot worse for Ireland. They were 50 for six. They were 94 for seven, but they've ended up scrapping up to 174. Here's the partnerships. The best two were the two between Gavin Howey and Neil Rock, and then the second one involving Howey with him and Liam McCarthy, who batted very cleverly indeed. It was worth 54, that partnership, probably the most sensible one of the innings. With Nepal winning the toss and choosing to bowl first, the best of the bowlers. Well, it was the two left armers, Rijan Dakal, the left arm seamer, and Shahab Alam, the left arm spinner, both outstanding.
Well, it was a day for Regent Hakal and Shah Balam. Shah Balam, in his previous game, took two wickets. And then this one is there with three. And what an important ten overs it was for Shah Balam. It was all for him. Took those important wickets. And he just... Look at those fall of wickets. It was going all good for Nepal until the fifth wicket was down for 39. And since then, it was Ali who made a good comeback. I'd say it was a good game. Those are the fall of wickets. Sahab Alam with that direct hit. The first wicket of the day. And Stephen Dahani trapped LBW by Shahab Alam. It came into action very quickly. Now what you're going to see is a string of rather tame dismissals. Morgan topping and prior to that PJ Moore. Very soft and then this one. Well, I'm not so sure about it. Gareth Delaney was the fifth wicket to fall in the power play. He was gone for a six-ball duck. Then Fionn Han was trapped right in front. Always going to go on and hit the stumps, that one. Neil Rock tried to hook one right off his chin. But he gave it away to Bashir Ahmed. Made it deep square. Then this was an excellent catch. What a grab from the subfielder, Rupesh Singh. Did so well to adjust. Then Tom Mays played on, and that was the last wicket to fall. The googly worked. Prefer that angle for the leg spinner. Angles in, turns away, and Bashar Ahmed again holds a good catch. So it's 174 the Irish Wolves have on the board. Surely Nepal A won't bat the way they did two days ago. And they'll be more sensible in the chase. They'll need 175 to win to square the series, to send us to a sensational Sunday. Don't go anywhere too far. We'll be back with all the action with you in about 30 minutes' time. Please do come and join us then live here on Action Sports HD.
Once again, back to Dish Home. Five Minute presents Island Wolves Tour of Nepal. This is the second one day match between these two teams. And the first having won by Island Wolves by a slight margin, which was a very low scoring game. A 21 runs win for Island Wolves. And a similar story has happened in this game as well. Dave Kanal on strike. Ireland have put on a total of 174 runs. They were all out in 38.4 deliveries. Just one played one more delivery than the previous game. This time they managed to put on 174 runs. 175 will be the target in the next 299 deliveries. Dave Kanal currently on strike was the man who powered Nepal for that comfortable start in the previous game. They had, a, along with Arjun Kumal, had a partnership of 35 runs in 31 deliveries. And at that point, it looked like Nepal would go on to easily win the match. Oh, he's edged it. Second ball. He's gone. Hand. Gets the big wicket. Dave Kanal this time not being able to add any runs to the total. He goes for a duck. Nepal still to open their score. Arjun Shout could only stand there in the non strikers end and look at that. Dave Kanal, he will be disappointed. It's the third delivery of the over. The first over and he goes for a duck. Nepal, zero for one. Subhata so comes into the center. That's really quick. If you're on hand, he's a fighter. He is a very strong fighter. And if you think this man is done and dusted only because 174 has been posted on the board by Ireland, you might be wrong because Nepal could not chase a dismal total of 157 in the first one day. Narin Bhatta guides one down towards the third. First runs for Nepal on the board. They're already at a spot of bother. Let's have a look at this in the replay. Easy catch for a second slip. He was there. Deep Khanal. Was speechless. Just missed for a duck. The under 19 captain of Nepal and Fionn Hand. He is excited. Again, testing. Arjun South outside the off stump. First over done. One wicket for Ireland already. One for one.
Nepal A one for one after one. Makati will bowl from the TU gate end. No, no, no. Beautifully bowled this. It was fairly successful, Makati, in the first of the three matches between Nepal A and Ireland Wolves. This is the second non official ODI. We're live from Kirtipur. And Nepal chasing this target of 175. They bowled well. But can they bat well? Can they replicate? And can they replicate good performance with the bat as well and chase this target? This is a wide delivery. So, not in but a big opportunity for him. It came back in a little too much this time. Tempting, not in outside the off stump. We can drive well, not in water. But the ball is moving. McCarty is making the ball to go both the ways. The first deliveries, they came back in. And this one had a hint of out away swinger. Liam McCarty bowled five overs, conceded 29 runs and picked up four wickets in the first unofficial ODI. And the wickets of Dev Kanal, Arjun Kumal, Arjun South and the captain Vinod Bandari. So four big wickets there in the first unofficial ODI for McCarty. Liam McCarty. Beautifully bowled again, again a hint of outswinger. Hasn't been a comfortable stay at the center, especially in this over for Narin Butter. Went for that expansive drive, did not connect at all, and lucky Narin Butter, no edge off it because the ball was moving. One wide and four good deliveries. Pulls it. Straight to Fee on hand. Will only be a single. So, Liam McCarthy had a wonderful time with the ball in the first unofficial ODI. He got four big wicket. He got Dev, Dev Kanal caught. He was batting really well, Dev Kanal. Scored 26 runs of only 22 balls. Four very, very stylish looking boundaries. And today he's been dismissed for a duck. Ben White on your screen there. So only two runs off the second over takes the score to three for one. Fion has taken that wicket, that important wicket of Dev Kanal, who along with Shah Balam were the two batters who played. A decent knock, you'll have to say. They got the starts at least apart from them. The other batters could manage nothing in that first match.
Shot and wide this time and caressed it really well. Found the gap to perfection. He penetrated the two fielders very, very well. That was hit hard as well. Wasn't a very good delivery. In fact, wasn't a good delivery at all. Was short, was wide and stylishly cut by Naren Vatta. This time on the other side of the wicket, but straight to the fielder there. Narin Bhatta going after the bowler. Fionn Hand has picked up his second. He cut one for the four, wanted to pull it as well. Did not try to keep it along the ground. Was uppish. And eventually a pretty easy catch there. Kate Carmichael, the second catch for him. Did not get out of the middle of the bat. And this is an easy catch held by Kate Carmichael. So trouble for Nepal already. Second down. Not in Vata goes. Bhim Sarki has now this responsibility on his shoulders again. He is a senior member in the side, in this Nepal A team. Has got international experience as well. Was out cheaply in the previous match. Very wide this. Eight runs for two wickets. This match is not over by any stretch of imagination. 174 for 10. Island A, they lost all their 10 wickets and could manage only 174. Hoi being the highest scorer, along with a very good innings from Captain Rock. But the way it's going, 8 for 2. Ireland A, the Ireland Wolves, would be licking their fingers. Because this match can be won from here. Especially because the Nepali side, the experience, the lack of experience in this Nepal A side, they're getting their exposure. They're not very experienced. And if they can, if this man, if you're on hand, can go through this top order, game on. Well left eventually by Bhim Sarki. Two big wickets for hand. It was the previous dismissal. Narain coming into this game and going straight into the hands of the fielder, adding just six runs to that total. He's had a wonderful previous game, if you're on hand, but didn't get those wickets that he deserved. But now he's taken two. Now that's some positive mindset by the player. I love his attitude, uh, Avash. That's a worried Nepali dugout. He comes in, bowls in really hard. He has that rugby player kind of a build-up. We'll come back to that after three, eight for two. South and Sarki at the center. Right 
was bowled very full. And Makadi, meanwhile, in the other end, is getting the ball to do the business, it's swinging both ways. Did trouble. Not in butter in the previous over. If Ireland Wolves win from here, that's the series for, the, for them. Lost against Nepal senior side, then won against them in uh, Nepal A in the G20 tournament. Went 2-1 to Ireland. They've already won one on official ODI. If they can win this match as well, It'll be certain that the trophy will would be going to Ireland. And meanwhile, for Nepal A, they would love to win today's match and make that final match the final of this contest. <laughs> Defended really well. Arjun South has got really good technique. He's got 150 for the senior side as well. He's got has played 12 matches. Hasn't been that kind of consistency that's required to be at the top. Has been in and out of the side. His club work has been fantastic. We've, we've been talking about it. He's easily the best keeper we have in Nepal. But that's not enough for him to get into the senior side. Well, you're talking about these two in particular, they need to have a good partnership at the moment. They have a good experience in their hand. Maybe something around 80, 90 runs, Sachin. Is that good enough? Well, Nepal desperately needs that, Avash. They need a partnership. They failed to do so. They were 35 for none in the previous match, chasing only 157, and then they were reeling for 90 for 8. A beautifully bold, massive appeal. Missed everything. It went through the bat and pad of Arjun South. The crowd getting excited. McCarthy actually wanted it. He's asking, is it the height? Let's have a look at this in the replay. That was most probably the height. I think the ball just went kissing the pad. That came back in real sharp and I think the umpire has got it right because the height would have taken the ball over the stumps. Look at the movement. It came in really, really sharply. Trying too much this time, Liam McCarthy. Well, what a over for this. For McCarthy. Five dot balls already. Just a wide. That one bother bother him. Oh, those cute smiles. They know they're on the giant screen. Again, a bit of movement. Only one run off that over. Another tight one from McCarthy. After four, nine for two. Yes, again. Oh, did it carry? Did it carry? Pune Hand looks disappointed. He got that edge perfectly out of the bat of him. Sharky. This could have been a massive, massive wicket for the Ireland Wolves side. Did it carry? That's the question. The second slip was there. Oh, it did. It went into his hand, right hand, and then straight out of it. Wasn't an easy catch, but do you expect 
you sleep fielders to take it what a bowler he is for your hand stephen doini he put in the dive did manage to get the ball inside his palm as well but bounced out of his hand so lucky survive here for vim sarki this is good cricket it's a lifeline for bhim sarki look at that again went all the way maybe because it was a bit low struck him in the palm not able to grab it by his fingers that's even the winny and brilliant angle from our camera team as well it's not an easy job sport broadcasting maintaining that good length area length fion hand he's got two wickets should have been three they're chasing 175 you wonder they're chasing 200 in t20s and they're getting closer and now all of a sudden they're chasing 157 175 It's a completely different mindset. <clears throat> well, something very interesting, Sachin. Ireland A were all out for all out in 38.3 deliveries in the previous game, and they were all out in 38.4 in this one. Played one ball extra. is having a wonderful time last ball of the over for fion hand has to bowl that again they'll take a quick single good running so two extra runs here for nepal it's been a tight start only one boundary conceded by the arlen wolves this is a very very wide ball I was talking about Fion Hand. Avash is very well built. He has got almost a rug, rugby player kind of a build. The intensity is seen. A beautiful looking shot that played on the rise, but could not pierce the gap. After five, two down for twelve. Brilliant targeted short delivery. This, this is hit him. Arjun South went with the pull shot. Very well directed bouncer. This Liam Makhate is a tall man. Arjun South isn't. There's, I think, a bit of check off concussion. It has hit him in the head, probably. Yeah, there's a concussion test. The new rule: if you're hit on the head, there will be some inspection. I think Arjun is all right. Yeah, I did hit him first on the, on his shoulders and then straight into his helmet. Well, the head concussions are taken pretty seriously, not just in cricket but different sports all around the world. He goes for the pull again. It has gone really high. Keeper getting underneath it. Oh, he's dropped it. He has dropped it. That's the Ireland World Wolves keeper. Neil Rock has dropped the setter. 
there could not have been an easier guess than this and the man has a pair of gloves as well it will be interesting to see in the replay but Arjun South has got a big lifeline let's have a look at this he got underneath it as well he has that glove oh he missed it completely Neil Rock would not want to look this in the replay Liam McCarthy cannot believe it he's having a smile at his captain it's all happening here cuts it this was again another chance oh what's happening here they're dropping catches every now and then i think the fielder should have attacked the ball and i think there was a chance of getting Bhim Sarkey out in this delivery. Well, Bhim has been dropped on zero by Doheny in second slip, and this time it was Arjun South dropped by the wicket keeper captain Neil Rock. And look at this again, Tom Mays. This time, as you said, should have gone for that. The target is pretty low. When you look at the 50 overs they got to play. They have figured out that the Nepali batters are not very comfortable with short deliveries, especially with this kind of pace. They've used it to perfection. Beam was dropped by Dohini when he was just in. He was batting at zero. He's dropped in the second slip area. And then Arjun South was gifted a lifeline by the Iris wicketkeeper and the captain. Again, another well-directed short delivery. He is enjoying bowling at this moment, McCarthy. Well, could have been 14 for 4 at the moment. With a stroke of luck this time in Nepali's favour. Two catches drop of two different players. It might be costly for Ireland Day. The Nepali bowlers have done a wonderful job and it's for the bats bats batsmen now. Remember Sachin? In the last game, eight players were caught out for Nepal. This time he has played this shot really well. He's controlled the bounce superbly and also found the placement. Wonderful looking shot this by Arjun South. He's put in into a lot of pressure after six, 18 for two. was a very good looking shot this off the bat of Arjun South was uh, how did he control the bounce of that ball he almost played it from the level of his shoulders there tremendous technique this and he found the gap to perfection as well Left shoulder and top hand They're balling a bit shorter. The Irish ballers. Sean Han already. Two wickets. Now into his fourth over. Ah, there you go. The tireless camera persons who bring us the every action of every second of this game. This time it's Beam Sarki on the rise again. And he caught pass point. It's not a very big gap there. Slowly the Nepal A innings getting that momentum, much needed momentum. Oh, caressed it really well. Beautifully played. Didn't try to overhit it. Found the gap to perfection. 
good comeback this again by Fionn Hand. He's using the short deliveries to perfection. One bounce for the over, says Mbaer. And good leave by Bhim Sarki. There's no point in rushing things. No risk to be taken. They, they must have learned their lesson from the previous game. This was the previous delivery. Not convincing this time. Now the question is, Nepal introduced spin really early in their bowling innings. When will Neil Rock go to one of his leg spinners? Beautiful view. Been here so many times, Sachin. Our childhood, since our childhood, sitting in those parapets, those areas to watch the game, see Nepal progress through the ranks. Now here we are. Just a check short, straight to the fielder. Seven gone, 23 for two. Slow delivery, very well ex executed. Beam Sarki batting at seven. And Beam Sarki, this is an opportunity for him as well. It's very easy to lose your side from the team because there's so much of competition now in the senior side. Beam Sarki once had that opportunity. He was almost a regular member of the team. Still will be consider considered as an important member, especially in the longer format of the game. He can also hit the ball big. He can change gears. Technically very correct. And I'm not a big fan of categorizing players as T20 players and one-day players. If a batter can strike big, if he's got good technique, I think he can play any format. That's what I believe. And Arif Sheikh has proven my point. So much of talks about him being a 50 overs player and not a T20 player and then comes in and smacks a 50 off only 29 ball strikes, 93 important runs in almost no time. Shorter delivery this time again and this is sailing over the fence. Enough is enough, says Bhim Sargi. He was kind of agitated by consistent attack by bouncers. He goes on with this pull shot. And gets his first six. What a time to hit that six. Two dot balls to start the over with. And now this maximum. Just look at that. Another shorter delivery. The Irish ball is it, trying to target that region. Just pull that one. Look at the technique. A slight lift of the bat. That helps it go all the way for a six. Proves my point again, isn't it, Beam Sarki? If I'm only a one-day batter... How can I strike a six off a pull shot? <laughs> full toss again and this is what he can do. Wasn't a good delivery by any stretch of imagination, but that required perfect placement and Bhim Sarki has done it perfectly. It's a delight to watch him play. Let's look at that. How confidently he struck that ball. It was like he knew where the baller is going to pitch that delivery. He took it brilliantly well. And as you were seeing, Sachin, I'd like to add to that. Just at the time when there was no the shortest format of the game. Players like Sanajoy Surya, the explosiveness of those batters. What do you consider them now? It's almost a requirement now, Avas. You have to have the ability to hit the ball big. I don't think players like Mohamed Kif or batters like Mohamed Kif or for that matter even VPS Lakshman would have survived in the shortest format of the game. But they had some limitations with hitting but if you see players like Bhim Sarki or Arif Sheikh for that matter, they have 
all kinds of shots in their handbook. And when that happens, you know, it's a bit frustrating when you're categorized as one format player. Look at the authority in that front foot defense. Beam Sarki batting at 17 of 19, 8 gone, 2 down for 33. So 10 runs off that previous over, Nepal slowly gaining the momentum, 33 for 2, 26 runs this partnership but Ireland have only themselves to blame because they have allowed a chance, in fact two chances to Bhim Sarki and one to Arjun South. Matthew Humphreys, he took five wickets in the previous match, he was very successful against the Nepali batters. Can he get some quick wickets for his team today? Well, it's on the note when we're talking about players being characterized into what sort of format suits them well. Look at that view, wonderful. Kathmandu Valley surrounded by hills all around. You can see those planes flying all over. And Sachin, when we talk about this, this player that always comes to my mind, Ben Stokes, this kind of player that fits on all formats of the game. For me, he's the proper modern-day cricketer. Really appreciate his, especially the approach he has to every game. He's won some big games, including the World Cup final instrumental role and that Ashes test. Appeal and go on. Humphreys is carrying on from where he left in the previous match. A wicket off the very second delivery. Arjun South already committed towards that front foot defense. The ball's turned. The ball did turn a bit. And a good take this from the keeper. Humphreys making the batsman come forward to play that shot. And I tell you who would be the most relieved man on the field right now, it will be Neil Rock. Was there an edge? Was there an edge? The finger was raised. Orson South was very unhappy with the decision. We'll see that in the replay again. Orson departs for 5, 33 for 3, Nepali. So Bashir Ahmed has been brought in by Captain Bandari. I wonder when he will come himself. 33 for 3 at the spot of border now. Bashir Ahmed threw his wicket away in the previous match. He was there. If he had given company to Shah Balam, Nepal would have won that match, which they eventually lost by 21 runs. And what has struck me about Humphreys is the length he's bowling at. He's a tall man, gives the ball a lot of air, a lot of loop. And then the length is full enough for the batter to be tempted to come and drive. But still can trouble the batters because he can generate bounds from there, just like the dismissal of Arjun South. Sweeps it. What a game he had in the previous ball. Ten overs, three maidens, just given away 32 runs and picked up five wickets in that process. And as you said earlier, started 
with where he left from in the previous game. He is hungry for wickets. And this is this is one special reason why we love the A crickets. Everybody getting a chance. You try to make your mark to get into the senior team. That's what I was discussing with Andrew in the previous innings. Did it turn that much? Oh wow. <laughs> well it did. Confusing not just the batsman but also the player at slip. This was that dismissal of Arjun South. Did it just kiss the gloves in the process? The first reaction did show the same Arjun South. Look behind at the keeper. Oh, Nairis and taken a very, very sharp cast to dismiss the settled Bimsarki. And Humphreys is having a purple patch with the ball. Oh, wow. Four down for 34 now. Nepal in deep, deep trouble. Well, this one, he just gifted it to the field that slips. You don't play these kind of shots when there are two players at slip. Just look at that. What a catch. What a catch. That was from Doheny. Was Beg your pardon? It was Peter Moore taking that catch. Doheny will be delighted. He goes for 17 of 21 deliveries. Nepal in some kind of trouble. 34 for 4. So Thomas will be brought balling from the T U get end. Got one over, went for nine in the previous match. No! Now Bashir Ahmed and Arif Sheikh Arif will be very instrumental if Nepal can get close to this target. Pinot Bandari here to bat. The crowd getting a bit excited now. 34 for four. The struggle has continued for this young Nepali side. Well, the spinners have done a wonderful job. Now, well, to, if you compare such in the end of 10 overs, Ireland were 39 for 5 and looks like the similar story for Nepali as well. Deja vu match this. It's like the previous. But in the previous, Nepal got off to a good start. There was a 35 runs partnership of 31 deliveries for the opening pair. And Bashir Ahmed did get a start in the previous match. He was one of the culprits behind that defeat of Nepal with only 21 runs because he was said that he had to. He had plenty of overs in hand. He could have just rotated the balls. He came down the track. There was a fielder there in the long on reason. He went and challenged that fielder and eventually got held out. And since then, despite the heroics of Shah Alam, Nepal could not manage that menial total. Comes down the track again. He'll have to readjust his game. Remember, they're only chasing 175. Premeditated. He had come down before the baller actually went for a jump. And the Ireland Wolves, they would be looking to take Arif's wicket the most because he's been the man in form, especially in the T20 contest. So 
Tommy's has started very smoothly. Five dot deliveries to start with. They've all required 141 runs. There are plenty of overs left, 40.1 overs. But the problem is the wicket section. Four down already. Well, it's different day, similar story. Talk about the innings. It looks kind of similar. Didn't get to the middle of the bat, but will produce a boundary for Bashid Ahmed, who breaks the shackle. Four runs of this over. And Ireland, Nepal A, in fact, 38 for four. Square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All good, all good, all good. Arif Sheikh. Number six. A lot of work to do. Is exceptional in the T20I series, the T20 series even. Q end of the bat has saved him here. If that hits One the pad, it could have been very close. The crowd are trying to rouse Nepal. To say we've seen some naive batting from both sides today. Absolutely, and this was that boundary came down the track, was off the toe end again, wasn't out of the middle of the bat. Both Sarki and South they got a lifeline. In fact, it was one of the easiest catches dropped by a wicket keeper I'd seen, I've ever seen, by Neil Rock. He'd be a very, very relaxed man after Sarki has been dismissed. It was an absolute dolly, wasn't it? it? Really was. Couldn't believe it went down. And then just a few moments later, he made amends. No, this is close. I think this could be gone. It's a shake of the head. And Arif Sheikh, brilliant in the T20s. Can't buy a run in the 50 overs. Humphreys is on fire. Outstanding from the left arm spinner. And Ireland right on top. Nepal in all sorts of trouble. Gordo Pfeiffer, the first match, already got two wickets, and this one was a big one, the big fish. Adif Sheikh dismissed. Yes, this was an easy decision for the umpire. Would have gone on to hit the off stump. Missed the line completely there, Adif. And he is delighted. Why wouldn't someone be? He is in a great, great bowling form, Humphreys. Arif dismissed for not, 38 for Well, look at that. Two left armers at the top of the pile. Shahab Alam of Nepal A, but it's the touring team and Matthew Humphreys that is the star of the show. He's bowled nine deliveries today. He's picked up three wickets to go alongside his five-wicket haul in the first contest. Eight wickets in just 11.3 overs. Outstanding from the left arm spinner. He's showing that rich potential of what could be for him at the senior international level. Bowling beautifully, and I bet you he wishes he could take this surface all around the world with him. Binod Bandari, the new man to the crease, he's at number seven. How can the Palais turn this around? The only answer is partnership, Lenny. The fair field to build one. Beautiful line again. 
for a moment I thought this was Humphrey's second wicket, but it, it's three wickets for him and only 11 balls. In fact, he got, got his three wickets in the first eight deliveries he bowled. This came in back really sharply. He played for the turn, but came in with the angle. He's suggesting there was some kind of connection with the bat. Arif there. And a wicket maiden. This by Humphreys. Brilliantly bowled. 11 gone. Nepal 38 for 5. Well, how can Nepal somehow turn this game around? They nearly did it the other day, leading 158 to win, 175 today. They're going to need good contributions, you'd expect, from Bashar Ahmed, who's been promoted up the order. Batted at number six the other day. And today he's up at number five, switched places with Arif Sheikh. And the home fans still believe, but I have to say, they've got themselves into a world of pain here. The other day it was... Some crazy shots, at least the runs were coming then. Today, some excellent bowling from Humphreys. I thought Fiona Hand was brilliant with the new ball. And they've got themselves into a world of pain here. Can they turn it around? It looks pretty difficult from here, Lenny. Also, is it, is it the mindset? Because they were striking runs, they were getting runs at quick time in the T20s, and certainly in the 50 overs, they're struggling to... To stay at the crease, score run, uh, scoring has been difficult. How difficult is it to convert yourself from the T20 format to the longer format? And right now, this is the, the longest format that Nepal play, that all of the associates play. There is no four-day cricket anymore. Intercontinental Cup is gone. Ireland do play test cricket, but even domestically, they don't have first-class cricket at the moment because it hasn't returned since the pandemic. You can almost see the team talk, can't you, from Guy Nendramala and, and Callum Ali the other day. Guys, we don't need to play aggressively. We have 50 overs to bat. Take your time. The problem is today, they've still lost wickets. And that's chinned him. I think that's hit him in the helmet. Probably going to be given as a leg by, and I think we should have a mandatory concussion check. Let's wait and see. There will be a mandatory concussion check. Oh, this is the second time that's, that has happened. It was Arjun South who got stuck in the helmet. In the previous occasion, this time it's Bashir Ahmed. They've used the short deliveries to great extent in this innings. It's okay, Bashir Ahmed. The ball actually just kissed his helmet, so it wasn't a major blow. It might have been a little bit of a cutter as well. It almost beat him for a lack of pace. And credit to the Irish team in terms of what they've identified as being Nepal's weakness. They've struggled against the short ball, haven't they? I know Humphreys has come in and and reap the damage with those three wickets and two overs. But Hand looked very threatening. McCarthy should have had a wicket if Neil Rock could have held on to that simple catch with the gloves. They've really impressed me at the way they've improved throughout this tour. Yes, there's been naive, naive batting on both teams' sides, but Ireland have adjusted to the conditions better than I maybe expected. And unless Nepal A can fight back, it's going to be an unassailable 2-0 lead again in this series. And it looks really difficult for the Nepal A side given the form they're, they're in, especially in the longer format of the game. That is the 50 over format. That's the longest we play. Hasn't been the same kind of flair sh shown by the Nepali batters, especially in the T20 series. Still be a big believer though, Sachin. If they bat their 50 overs here, if they're close to it, I think they'll still win. Look at the aggression again. 
Not going to be given as a wide as Bandari wants. Good stuff from Mays. Two from his second. 40 for five. Well, look at those figures from Matthew Humphreys. Three for one, he's got in two overs. Really, really impressed with how he's bowled. He's bowled with great control. He's probably learned from Shahab Alam that on these surfaces, in this format, in the 50 over format, you don't need to do a huge amount. If you keep putting it in the same place, you're going to probe away, test the batters. They did the similar thing, isn't it? Shahab and Humphreys. Shab Alam also bowled really slow. He's fairly successful in Humphreys. He gives the ball a lot of flight. Getting a little too excited this time, Humphreys. A wide delivery and a single taken as well. So two extra runs for Nepal. I think the thing the two standout bowlers have done nicely, actually, the, the left arm spinners. Humphreys and Shahab Alam. They've just varied their pace, haven't they? We saw Shahab Alam do that quite a lot. He wasn't afraid to toss them up, but then also you got quicker ones coming into the surface and getting sharp, sharp turn. That time too short. Bandari gets a big cheer to get off the mark. You're going to pick up a couple of family and friends of Bandari up there. Forty-four for five. Nepal A. They're chasing one seventy-five. Last man to go was Adi Sheikh. That was a massive, massive wicket for the Ireland Wolves side. There we go again. A different trajectory to that delivery. Little flatter through the air. Ah, where is Avash Kumara? Who's he found there? Stylish man, isn't he, our co-commentator? Co he is. They come back for the second run. And Avash and me, we had a brief conversation about the hairstyles, different hairstyles. He loves his long hair. And you love your no hair. <laughs> <laughs> We've got kind of, kind of three different ones, don't we? We've got... Three different styles in the box, don't we? Little, medium, and large. <laughs> when I say little, I mean none, really. I like the Taklu look. I, I'm a big fan, I have to say. Particularly in this weather, do you not feel hot with all that hair in your head, Sachin? It's getting warm. You ask Avash that question, Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what do you think at home? Do you like the Avash look with the ponytail and the, the facial hair, the Tom Cruise sunglasses on? You know, he's actually deceiving everybody with this long, long hair. You know, I've, I've got just perfect. He's no hair. <laughs> and Avash, if he cuts his hair, I think he'll soon become you because he started losing hair from his forehead. <laughs> oh, a bit of a sledge from the box. A brave leave here from Vandari. I think he's going okay for now. 13 bold, another probing over. 46 for five. Now one thing Nepal can certainly take some 
confidence from is, is the fact that really the Irish runs came later in their innings as well. It was a 44-run seventh wicket partnership between Neil Rock and Gavin Hoey, and then Gavin Hoey combined with Liam McCarthy to put on 54. That was for the eighth wicket. So you'd think that Really, they're going to need two partnerships like that to get them up close to that 175 target. If Bandari and Ahmed could put on 50-plus, the game would look a lot different, wouldn't it? And that's tickled around the corner nicely. Should get a couple, will do. And the crowd cheering every run. The runs have been difficult to come by. That's Sony Gariel, Mrs. Bandari. She supports his cricket Enjoys coming in, in, the, in the ground and she loves watching her husband bat and she also has a lot of interest in, in other sports as well. And that's very well played because that has bounced steeply and 50 is going to come up. Again, it shows there's different ways to, to play the short ball. You don't have to necessarily hook every delivery. And Bandari of all people, the captain of this side, be desperate to make sure they show some fight and maybe square the series. And some respite for Nepali fans. Ireland were 50 for 6. So not much of a difference. In fact, Nepal ahead at this situation. Still plenty to do here for this pair. An appeal from behind the stumps, and it's given. Well, Tom Mays has barely appealed, but the finger goes up. I'm not sure Bashir Ahmed is convinced by it. First slip, and the keeper were nothing from Mays, and almost tentatively, the finger goes up just as a partnership was brewing. Another one goes. Was there an edge? Mays, it was a half-hearted appeal. He was actually encouraged by the keeper and the slip fielder. Went for that appeal immediately. Bashir Ahmed was disappointed, but he did follow the ball after the ball passed back. Eventually, the finger has been raised, and the sixth wicket has fallen for Nepal, 50 for six. Well, would you believe it? Both sides are the exact same score at the exact same time. 13.4 overs bowled in the first innings. The Irish Wolves were 50 for six. 13.4 overs bowled in the second innings. They palais 50 for six. Deja vu. It's a really interesting move. It's not going to be Shahab Alam, who we thought might be promoted up the order. It's not going to be Kamal Singari, but it's going to be Rijan Dakal. We all expected Shahab to come because he was the highest scorer yesterday. He scored 37 important runs and it was a tough time as well. Showed a lot of authority in that innings. Didn't allow the bowlers to get on top of him. Came down the track and smacked one out of the park as well. It's another wicket taking over, albeit in slightly surreal circumstances. Ahmed the man who's gone. Mays is his first. 50 for six. Don't get too straight. 
Get some. Now Humphreys is going to continue. Understandably, Bandari punches him down the ground. See if we can get one more look at this dismissal. You and I didn't hear anything, Sachin. I think he's missed that, but what Bashir did wrong is he just looked back at the keeper after the ball passed the bat. You should never be doing that. That gives an added confidence to the umpire. I don't even really think first slip was convinced either. It was really just Neil Rocket went up with the big appeal. That beats the outside edge. Humphreys right now, he has it on a string. Beautiful bowling. He's got a fifer in the previous match. He's now got three. He's already got three in 3.2 overs. He has plenty of overs left. Can he go for another fifer? Will he be able to get another five wicket haul? Easily defended this time. Come on, boys. Stay good there. I've really been struck by the length bowled by Humphreys. He's actually asking the batters to come forward. And then he can generate some extra bounce off the track, some bit of turn as well, and he becomes a very devastating bowler. Yeah, and these really are dream conditions to bowl into. Look at the two slips there. <laughs> asking for the ball to come towards him. PJ Moore at first slip, who took that excellent catch. And... Stephen Dahani at second. You almost get shades of Shahabalam to Fionn Hand here. It feels like a matter of time for Humphreys to Dakal. Nepal have to show some grit. Otherwise, this series will be gone. The Ireland Wolves were in a similar situation. And they managed a partnership of 44 runs. That was between Hoy and the skipper Rock. Skipper Bandari will have to build a partnership with Dakal. Ah! Side edge onto the pad. That's the only thing that could have saved. In fact, he's given him. Oh dear. Well, I'm not too sure about this one. And Dakal isn't either. I think we've seen Bashar Ahmed be pretty unlucky in the previous over. And I'm not sure Ireland were convinced by this one either. Umpiring has been a bit of a talking point in the T20 series. It sounded like two noises. It looked like two noises. Rijan Dakal says he got some bat on this, did he? Let's get a look. Well, he's hit it, isn't he? Not too sure about that decision. But ultimately, it took a long, long time, too. It was five or six seconds. This will show you clearly now, I think. Yeah, inside edge onto the bat. Onto the pads after the bat. But ultimately, Rijan Dakal's gone. Another wicket falls. He is gone. For a duck, it's 51 for seven.
in Captain Neil Rock and Hoy, and they managed 44 runs, and then again with McCarty, and that those two partnerships took the score to 174, and Nepal were believing that they could chase this just like in the first match, but again, like the first match, they crumbled, and this time, even worse, 60 runs is all they could manage from 16.5 overs, and the top scorers were Bhim Sarki with 17 and 16 for Binod Bandari, and nobody else managed a score of double digit. Yeah, real grim reading, isn't it, for Nepal fans? 60 all out, it means, and it's a 2 0 unassailable lead again for the Irish Wolves in the series. We'll just do the final game on Sunday to wrap it all up. Ireland will be looking for a clean sweep in the 50 overs. That's going to wrap up the coverage from in the commentary box. We'll be back with a post match presentation. We'll have three awards to give out, and we'll hear from both captains. Binod Bandari's interview could make for interesting listening. We'll be back with that in a few moments before Sunday's game at 9.30. Do stay with us. We'll see you very shortly.
Okay, post-match presentation time for the penultimate game of the tour here, the Dish Home Fibernet Ireland Wolves Tour of Nepal. We've seen a low-scoring game again. Surprisingly, the Irish Wolves defended their total of 174 to win by a big 114 runs and take an unassailable 2-0 lead in the series. Great credit to them. We've got three awards to give out, and we'll also hear from both captains. We'll start with our first award. It's the Degree Malia Striker of the Match. It's going to be presented by Mr. Jagat Tamata, who's going to come up and join me on stage, the Nepal Under-19 head coach. You did such a brilliant job with his team down in South Africa. Jagat, namaste, nice okay. to see you. How are you, brother? Okay, plenty of contenders today, mainly from the Irish team. Good innings from Liam McCarthy and also Gavin Howey, but the degree Malia striker of the match hit 45 of just 38, three fours and three sixes. It goes to the Irish Ireland Wolves captain, Neil Rock. So Neil will receive his cheque for 7,500 rupees and pose for a photo as the degree Malia, striker of the match. Thank you so much, gents. Okay, time now for the Manzara most valuable player of the match. They're also going to receive a cheque for 7,500 rupees, and Mr. Arjun Pedal is up next to me, the CAN board member and CAN tournament director as well. Thanks to him and his team for all their work so far. Well, it was a really important innings all the way down at number eight. The MVP of the day today, he made 50 off 59. It goes to Gavin Hoey. So Gavin will receive his check for 7,500 rupees from Arjun Powell. A really important innings from the Leinster Lightning all-rounder. Thank you, gents. Okay, time to speak to both captains. We'll start with the captain of Nepal, Binod Bandari. Binod, firstly, hard luck today. A very heavy defeat, that. I have to start with the batting. 60 all out, not good enough. No, batting is a good thing, but batting is a good thing. I'm going to bat for you. I'm going to bat Only two batters made, made double figures. There was some good bowling, certainly, from Ireland. But where do you feel that things went wrong for your batters? In Nepal, I'm going to go they should know those home conditions better. What about the bowling? You were really pleased with the position 50 for 6. That was a wonderful start that you had. Do you feel they got away from you a little bit to post 174? Or were you happy with 174 as their total? I know. 174 is a good score. Yeah. Our good team, Bonico Ramu Kelan and Ida, you know, you have a partnership, Unsa Bisma, fifty over game or long format games at the other same partnerships in Unsa. About one seventy four, say our Rudin Bonny, Cosarilin Dinsa, when you say, Tigal year chase on the Sagin City. Yeah, it looks like a total you, you could chase. What about in terms of how, how you turn it around? What learnings will you take from today? How will you approach the third and final match differently? I know games, I have a been a hard luck today. Thanks for talking to me. Okay, Dandavad to Binod Bandari, the captain of the Nepal A side. Time now to speak to the winning captain. It's Neil Rock of the Ireland Wolves. Neil, you must be absolutely ecstatic. You've come out here to Nepal for the first time, and you're going to take both pieces of silverware against the Nepal A side home. 2 0 up in the series, an unassailable lead. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, this morning I thought we might be out of here by lunch. Um, it was a good toss to lose. Thankfully, uh, even, I even thought 170 was under par. I, don't think, I think the wick was still pretty good. Um, and I thought the way Gav batted for someone who hasn't played a lot at this level was fantastic really was a, a stunning innings and that partnership firstly with you and then a really good contribution too from Liam McCarthy got you up to, I agree with you, what felt like a subpar total. How well did, did Liam and both Gavin play? Yeah, just the calmness they showed. Um, to be honest, when it gets to that stage and you're batting, it almost comes a little bit easier because the expectations is, are off you. Um, but the calmness they showed and, and the partnership they put on got us up to a defendable score, but we we're certainly still under par. On the negative side, certainly the top order continues to have some problems. You're 50 for six today and all sorts of trouble. Can you put your finger on why that is? No, I'm not sure. To be honest, um, some fantastic players at the top of the order. Just a few of them short of runs, which happens. It's cricket, you know. Um, but I thought the fight the guys showed through the middle there uh, to get us up to that total was great. 
What about the fast bowlers? If you want to hand, I think for me, bowled his best spell of the tour. He was really aggressive and fiery at the top. Tom Mays, too, was really impressive. They shared four wickets between them. Yeah, and Matty will get all the applause, and rightly so, but I thought the way Fionn and Liam set the tone was, was great. Uh, it's definitely the best we've been in the field, uh, bar me shelling one, obviously. But the way they set the tone um, really got us going, and I said to the guys going out there, just try to create a bit of panic and see what happens from there, and thankfully we did. OK, what about Matthew Humphreys? Two games in the 50-over format, 11 wickets in those two appearances. He looks like he's got it on a string at the moment, and he's varying his pace nicely. He's causing problems who, who would be very used to playing spin here at this ground. Yeah, absolutely, I say he has it on a string. You know, I've played a lot with him the last few years and he's always taken wickets, but the control he's added to its game um, has really shown. And I think to back up to today was, was the most impressive thing. And he just kept it really simple and was relentless with, with bowling his best ball and he got his rewards. It's a Friday night, you're 2-0 up in the series. Any quiet celebrations tonight? Um, potentially, potentially. Very well played, congratulations. Okay, Neil Rocker, delighted. Ireland Wolves captain. We've just got one more award to give away. It's the big one. It's for the Valley Express Player of the Match. I'd like to ask Miss Pratima Canal, the director of Valley Express, to come up and join me. Pratima is going to give out the check for ten thousand rupees. Namaste, Pratima. And plenty of contenders, but really it was a one-man show again, wasn't it, for the Irish Wolves? He's taken 11 wickets in two games. Today his figures, well, they're extraordinary. Career best, in fact, 4.5 overs, one maiden, six wickets for eight runs. The player of the match again, it's Matthew Humphreys. And Matthew is not just going to get that check for 10,000 rupees, but also I'd like to call upon Mr. Roshan Kumar Singh, the Vice President of the Cricket Association of Nepal, and also a board member of the Cricket Association of Nepal, to bring the Player of the Match trophy up onto stage and also present that again. One more round of applause, please. The Player of the Match, Matthew Humphreys. <laughs> Matthew, stay there, mate. Many congratulations. What's that you've got in your pocket? Is that the match ball by any chance? Of course it is. I'll be... He's in a club training next week. <laughs> How much have you enjoyed bowling here? The, these wickets, well, they've really suited you. Yeah, I'd roll them up and take them home with me if I could. Um, we'll be going back to the start of the season here in Ireland. I don't think we'll see any spin like that. What about your career trajectory? You, you, you were debuted and capped at a very young age, a tender age at senior level. Do you feel that came a bit too soon? Or, or is this really just a, a sign of the part of your journey? You're in such good form with the ball. Now you're certainly going to be pressing the selectors' minds. Yeah, no, I, th I think like you can never say a bad thing about when you make your debut. Um, I think it was certainly a big wake-up call for me. Um, and the last sort of 12 months, I've been a lot of hard work, especially with Chris Brown um, and JCD at home. And it's just great to get the rewards. Yeah, nice to, to give a shout-out to both Chris Brown and James Cameron Day. They, they seem to really be developing the Irish spinners in a way that historically not have been there. You've got a great crop of, about you, Gavin Hoey, Gareth Delaney, Ben White, yourself. You all seem to be great, sort of great comrades too. Are you spurring each other on? You're improving each other's games? Yeah, I mean, we spend a lot of time in North County together, um, bowling, but yeah, you know, the, the expertise that Brownie's brought um, to us has been amazing. Um, just drilling us hard, not letting us get away with um, training like under what you'd want, like the level you'd want to be at, and um, like his his advice on how to control the game and stuff like that's been brilliant. Yeah, I know you'll get the headlines and rightly so, but your seam bowling colleagues did a brilliant job. Fionn Hand with that new ball today was exceptional. Yeah, no, I think I've, I've said it before, but the opening uh, bats for Nepal are, are pro proper players, um, so taking those those wickets early on makes it so much easier than for us coming on the middle. 2 0 up in the series, two player of the match awards, match ball in your pocket. Many congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, Matthew Humphreys, the Valley Express player of the match. That's also going to wrap up our coverage for the day. It's a bit earlier than intended. Ireland are 2 0 up in the series. They will definitely take the silverware. Can they take a 3 0 series clean sweep? You'll find out with us in just a couple of days' time, the final game of this Dish on Fibernet. Ireland Wolves Tour of Nepal, 9 30 a.m. local time. Hopefully, get a good crowd to round things out. Remember, you can download that Dish Home Go app as well and enjoy all the action then. Thanks so much for watching today. We'll see you again on Sunday.